My name is Jamie Lee Pizarsik. P I S A R C I K. Ms. Pizarsik, were you Lyle Menendez's girlfriend for a period of time? Yes. When was it that you first met him, please? What year? Um, 1986, in the fall. And where did you meet him? In Princeton, New Jersey. And how long was it after you met him that you became his girlfriend? Shortly after, <coughs> within weeks. And from the time you met him in 1986 and became his girlfriend and to a, a later point in time, did, did you continue to be his girlfriend until some specific month and year? Yes. And when was it that you first broke up with him? Um, I first broke up with him in the spring of 1989. So that for a period of the fall of 86 until the spring of 89, you were his girlfriend, correct? Correct. Do you remember what month it was that you and Lyle had broken up in the spring of 89? Um, I believe it was April. Then did you and he get back together? Yes, we did. Was that after the death of his parents? Shortly after, yes. Now, in the spring of 1989, um, had you ever been to the Menendez home in Beverly Hills? In the spring of 1989? Yes. By that time, had you ever been to the Menendez home? Yes. And do you recognize the woman who just left the courtroom? Yes. And who do you recognize her as being? Flora, the maid. And had you seen her at the Menendez home when you had visited there in Beverly Hills? Correct. Now, at some point, did you learn that, uh, excuse me, um, were you aware of the fact that Lyle Menendez um, had gone to obtain um, a wig. Yes. And could you tell us when it was that you first became aware of that? Um, I went with him. It was in Birmingham, Alabama. And when what, what month and year was it that you went with him in Birmingham, Alabama? I believe that was the spring of 1987. <laughs> and at that time, um, did he have thinning hair on top? Yes, he did. And it was something that was noticeable to you? Yes. Had you discussed with him his idea about getting a hairpiece in the spring of 1987? Yes. Okay. And at that time, did he acquire such a hairpiece? Yes, he did. Were you present in the Menendez home any time after that when you had a discussion where Eric, part Eric Menendez participated in a discussion about Lyle Menendez's hairpiece? Objection leading. Yes. Okay. Could you tell us where you were physically located when this discussion took place? In Eric's bedroom. And where, where was the bedroom inside of the house? It was on the second floor. And do you remember where you were seated at the time or standing? Um, I was standing in the doorway. Okay. And Eric was at his desk. It was, any, was anyone else present aside from you and Eric? Uh, just, I mean, in the house, yes, but not there at that, you know, in that room. Okay. Could you tell me the nature of your conversation with Eric Menendez sure. at that time? I'm going to object to this mistake. Come on. See no foundation. Sorry, do you remember what month it was that you had this conversation with Eric Menendez? Not exactly. I do not. Um, was Lyle Menendez at the home with you at the time? Yes. Okay. Was he on break from college at the time, or was? Or do you know if what his status? Okay, let me back up. Do you know what his status was as a college student in the spring of 1989? Um, he would have, in the spring of 1989, been at Princeton. Right, but when you had this conversation, you right. were in Beverly Hills. Right, so he, it would have been either summer break, probably the summer break. And um, could you tell me then what time of day it was that you had this conversation with Eric Menendez? I'm going to object again as Vegas. Time, I need to. Okay, objection rule. Okay. Do you remember what time of day it was that you had this conversation? Um, I don't remember exactly. Okay, and what what did you? Who started the conversation about uh, Lyle's hairpiece? I believe Eric started the conversation. And what did he say? He was just amazed. He was kind of joking because he was amazed that Lyle had the, all this time had the hairpiece because it was he had Lyle had had the hairpiece for a while prior to that, and he didn't know, and that was why he was um, uh, he was amazed because Lyle's hair always looked so perfect. Okay. Did he indicate? So, all right, and did he indicate to you that he hadn't known about it up until the time of your discussion? Objection leading. Um, yeah, he did not know right from the start when Lyle got his hairpiece. He did not know initially, but he had found out at some course okay, and during when the you, time. When you had Objection, speculation, moved to strike. Objection sustained, but he did find out that the rest of it was speculation or at least there's no foundation at this point. Okay. Um, was it your understanding when you went with Lyle Menendez in 1987 to Birmingham, Alabama, that he did not want people to know that he was wearing a hairpiece? 
No, he was more concerned with the fact that he was losing his hair and he didn't want people, when he went back to Princeton, to um, realize that he had gotten a hair piece. He wanted to have his hair piece before he went into Princeton, so it would not have been as noticeable if he was in Princeton, say, for a year or two and then got his hair piece. He thought it would be more, more noticeable then as compared to if he had gotten it upon going into Princeton at the beginning. Now, when you had the conversation with Eric Menendez at the Beverly Hills house, sometimes, sometime I believe you said you think it might have been the summer? Close to the summer. It would have been actually prior to that, or, you know, late spring, early summer. Okay. And of 1989, is that correct? Correct. And when you had the conversation with Eric Menendez in the Beverly Hills house in 1989, did he indicate to you how he had found out that his brother was wearing a hairpiece? Objection, Your Honor. It assumes that's not evidence. Right. Um, during the time that you had a conversation with Eric Menendez, did he indicate to you that he knew that his brother wore a hairpiece? Your Honor, I'm going to object this is leading. I mean, why don't we just... Objection overruled, counsel. Your, your question, do you understand the question? If you could repeat it, please. I did not hear it all. All right. Why don't you tell you, I believe you indicated that you had a conversation with Eric Menendez in 1989 in the Beverly Hills house. You were standing in the doorway. He was sitting at his desk. Is that correct? Correct. And the subject matter of the discussion was, what was the subject matter? The subject matter was Lyle's hairpiece. And I believe you indicated that Eric Menendez brought up the subject. Is that correct? Objection to state's testimony. Right, why don't you just ask what was said? Okay, I'll ask again exactly what was said and who first said it. I don't remember exactly how the conversation did start, but I do remember because Eric was, um, you know, surprised uh, and because Lyle had had such perfect hair. That's what I remember. And did he indicate to you how, uh, what he thought the perfect hair was attributable to? In other words, did he indicate to you that he knew something about Ooh. Lyle's hair? Objection just that. Overall. Just that he did have the wig on, that he, that's, he was wearing a wig. And did Eric indicate to you how he knew that when you had your discussion with him in the spring of 89? I, I do not remember the exact um, wording that Eric said as to, you know, how he found out. At the time that you had your discussion with him in 1989, mm -hmm. was it clear to you that Eric knew that his brother had a hairpiece? Yes. Yes, Your Honor, his speculation is irrelevant. Overall, your answer? Yes. Okay. And then you broke up with um, Lyle in April of 89, is that correct? Correct. Did you go to the house in Beverly Hills at any time after that, between it, April of 89 and when the parents were killed, did you, did you have any other trips to that Beverly Hills house? No, I did not. Thank you. I have nothing further in front of both jurors. All right. And uh, what is the, well, let me see counsel at the sidebar as far as the time estimate here for the balance of the examination. What's going to happen now is that there will be some testimony before the Lyle Menendez jury only. The time estimate is that it will be approximately 30 minutes. And during that time, the Eric Menendez jury doesn't have to be here. After that is completed, um, then there will be cross-examination of the witness or examination of the witness before both juries. So um, what I'll do is uh, take a recess now until 10 minutes after the hour for everybody. And then we'll pick up um, at 10 minutes after the hour with just the gold jury in the courtroom. And then uh, we'll ask that the uh, blue jury come back. Um, and assuming this time estimate is um, accurate, uh, we should be uh, starting up again with both juries around uh, 340 or thereabouts. So if you can all get back here so we can start up with you around 340. Um, with a blue jury, um, then hopefully we'll be in sync and we'll have both juries back in the courtroom. And uh, I haven't forgotten uh, the discussion I'm going to have with you regarding the schedule for the balance of the trial. I just have yet to get a definitive uh, answer from all the lawyers as to what exactly is going to transpire. And until I do, there's no sense giving you information that is going to have to be uh, amended or corrected uh, after they give me more information. So. Um, I'm going to hold off a little bit further before I get there. Uh, so what we'll, we'll do is take a recess now. Ten minutes after, we want the gold jury back in the courtroom and the uh, blue jury, if you could return at 3.40 so that we can resume with both juries. You may continue your direct examination. Thank you. Ms. Pizarsic, I believe now we're to April of 1989, which was the first time that you and Lyle Menendez broke up. Is that correct? Correct. And then you and he got back together after his parents' deaths. Is that correct? Correct. 
And at some point, did you and he become boyfriend and girlfriend again? Yes. Do you pro know approximately what month it was that you and he began your relationship? Well, we had seen each other several times this summer. Even though we had broken up, we had seen each other um, when he would come back to New Jersey um, several times during that summer. And we were actually supposed to be at a tennis tournament uh, the weekend of his parents' death. Um, I was supposed to meet him there at that tournament in Vermont. Um, I did go to that tennis tournament, but he did not show up at the tournament. Um, so we had talked to each other prior to that. Um, and then it was shortly after his parents' death that um, he called me and asked me to please attend the funeral in New Jersey. And uh, we saw each other there. All right, now let's back up. I believe you indicated that he um, asked you uh, that you, it was your understanding he was going to be at a tennis tournament the weekend that his parents died? Yes. And how many days before that was the last time you had spoken to him about going to, meeting him at the tennis tournament? Um, probably a week or so, and I had actually, I talked to his mother also because she was setting up the arrangements the the tournament entry. And when did you speak to his mother, if you recall? Approximately a week prior. All right, so that would have tournament. been on the weekend prior to the tournament? I don't remember the exact day, but roughly a week or so before. And when you spoke to Mrs. Menendez, was it your understanding that Lyle Menendez was going to be attending the tournament? Correct. Do you remember what day of the week you arrived at the tournament? It was a weekend tournament, so I probably got there on Friday. And at some point you learned that Lyle Menendez was not at the tournament, is that correct? Correct. Where were you physically located when you spoke to Lyle Menendez for the first time after his parents' deaths? I was back in Lawrenceville, uh, the Princeton area. Um, when I had spoken to Lyle, I'm sorry? Yes. Um, yes, I was back in Lawrenceville after the tennis tournament. So it would have been during the week, is that correct? correct. And so you went to the services in New Jersey, is that correct? Yes. And then sometime after that, you became his girlfriend again? Yes. All right, and were you um, his girlfriend in March of 1990 when he was arrested for the murder of his parents? Yes. And shortly after his arrest, did he contact you telephonically or by a jail visit and ask you to do something in relation to some property of his in, in his car? Yes. Could you tell me how the contact was made? Was it over the phone or was it when you visited him? Um, I believe it was over the phone. Um, he was because uh, I, yeah, I had not seen him yet. All right, so was this the first contact you had with him after his arrest? Yes. And when you spoke with him over the phone, did he ask you to get something out of his car? Yes. And could you tell me what he asked you to do, please? There were uh, a, let a box of private letters um, that he had asked either myself or asked me to have someone get those for him. Did you yourself, did you get those letters or did you have someone do it? Um, I did not. Um, it was um, Glenn Stevens. Did you personally ask? <laughs> the answer is stricken. Okay. Did you personally take any letters out of Lyle Menendez's car? No, I did not. Did you ask anyone to do that on his behalf? Yes. Who did you ask? Glenn Stevens. Thank you. Um, after his parents' deaths, did Lyle Menendez indicate to you who had done the killings or his idea of who had done the killings? Right after their deaths? Well, okay. Shortly after his parents died and you became aware of it and you went to the memorial service, mm -hmm. you began to resume your relationship with Lyle Menendez. Correct. Did he indicate to you uh, any particular group of people who were responsible for his parents' deaths? Yes. And who did he indicate to you? He said it was either the mob or the mafia or someone business related to his father. And did he tell you this on more than one occasion? Yes. Now, at some point in the summer of 1990, after Lyle Menendez had been in custody for a while, did you move into the family's Beverly Hills home? Yes. And was it someone's suggestion that you move into the Beverly Hills home? Yes. Whose suggestion was it? It was Lyle's. And did he give you a reason that he wanted you to move into the family's Beverly Hills home? He's, yes, he did. And what did he tell you? Um, he said, for my personal safety, uh, he felt it was a safer location than in the apartment that I had been living in at the time. Now, um, during this period of time, um, March, April, May, and June of 1990, were you in love with Lyle Menendez? Yes. 
Um, at that time, what was your status um, in terms of marriage? Did you have a status in terms of marriage? Well, we had been engaged prior to that. Um, when was it that you had been engaged previous to his incarceration? We were engaged from the spring of 1988 to the spring of 1989. And was the engagement broken at or about the same time that you broke up your relationship? With it? Yes, it was. And did you make any plans after he was incarcerated um, regarding marriage? Was there any kind of discussion about that, if you recall? Uh, yes. And what, what was the, your understanding of what your status was regarding um, Lyle Menendez? Well, he had asked me to uh, wear his engagement ring again um, at the time that he was in jail. And uh, obviously, there were no plans made at that time. But uh, Did you begin to wear his engagement ring again? Yes, I did. Did you go to court um, when he went to court to support him? Yes, I did. And did you believe at that time that he was not involved in his parents' murders? Yes. And at some point, did you begin to have doubts about your belief? Yes. All right. In December of 1990, approximately December of 1990, did you go to the county jail and have a very upsetting discussion with Lyle Menendez? Yes. Prior to going to the county jail in December of 1990 and having this discussion, had Lyle Menendez asked you to do anything for him while he'd been incarcerated regarding research at the law library? Yes. Could you tell us what he asked you to do, please? Um, he asked me to look up several cases. Um, and at the time, he gave me the case names and numbers, if, you know, if there was a number to them, um, and asked me to look those cases up and get copies made of them. And did you, in fact, uh, try to obtain copies of cases for him? Yes. Where did you do that? At the Santa Monica La Law Library. And where is the Santa Monica Law Library located? It's in Santa Monica on, I believe, 4th Street, where the courthouse is. And did you ever go to Santa Monica to any court proceedings that Lyle Menendez attended <clears throat> during the summer of 1990? Yes. And did you go to court to support him during that period of time? Yes, I did. What was the nature of the case? Well, let me ask you this. Did you ever read any of the cases that Lyle Menendez asked you to look up? Um, well, I read parts of them, yes. And did you get a feel for what kind of cases you were looking at? Yes. Could you describe the nature of the cases that you were asked to look up in Xerox for Lyle Menendez? Um, the cases were um, situations where children had gotten off um, after killing their parents. Were there any other kind of cases, any other subject matter of a criminal nature uh, that was involved in these cases you were asked to look up? Not that I recall. Anything about child molesting? Um, I believe, so, yes. I mean, the cases were, you know, child molestation um, and, you know, children had killed their parents and um, gotten off. Now, when you read these or looked at portions of these cases, did you ever begin to have any doubts about what you thought about Lyle Menendez. Yes. Okay. And during the period of, his, of time that you were still his girlfriend, did he ever ask you to get any books for him so that he could have reading material? Uh, frequently. All right. And did you, in fact, obtain those books? Um, several times a week, yes. How many times? Several times a week. Sometimes, you know, whenever he wanted, basically. Could you tell me the nature of the kind of books that he asked you to get? Um, there were all different kinds of books. Do you remember specifically the subject matter of any of the books? Several, yes. OK, could you tell me the subject matter, please? Um, there was one, the subject matter was um, sign language. And uh, the only other title I specifically remember was the uh, Billionaire Boys Club. The Billionaire Boys Club? Correct. Had you ever had any discussion with Lyle Menendez about the Billionaire Boys Club before the time that he asked you to retrieve this book? No. How was it that you were able to get the books to him if he was incarcerated? Um, we um, went, I went to like Walden Books. A lot of times Walden, they have a service that they will actually, you buy the books, you pay for them, and they will ship them for you. And they'll ship them anywhere? Uh, yes. Right. They would, and they had a certain way to, I guess, you know, make sure they were obtained by the people at the jail. All right, which Walden books did you go to, if you recall? Usually the one at the Beverly Center, but there were, there were very many different bookstores. Now, after you were asked to do this research at the law library in the Santa Monica Courthouse, then did you ask Lyle Menendez in December of 1990 to discuss with you 
Well, let me let me back up. Did you have a conversation with him in December of 1990? Yes. And that was at the county jail. Correct. Were you alone with him at that time? Um, yes. I were mean, you, well, I, I, that's yeah. hard. Were you the only visitor to Lyle Menendez at the time that you had this discussion? Yes. And you were in a room with other inmates and other visitors. Correct. Okay. And did you ask him um, to tell you something? Yes. What did you ask him? I at that time um, wanted to know the truth. And what happened? At that time Lyle held up a letter because um, he did not want to discuss this over the syst phone system that was there. Um, so he held up a letter and um, it was it just described that he and Eric had killed their parents. Now, um before I ask you more questions about this particular letter, could you describe the accommodations there? Is there a screen of some sort of material like glass? Glass, or it is glass. And that separates you from Lyle Menendez? Correct. And how is it you are able to speak at the county jail when you go to visit? Is it over a phone or do you talk through a, a hole in the glass? It was usually a phone. All right. And so on this particular occasion, the way that you communicated, when you asked him to tell you the truth, did you do that over the phone or did you do that? Did you write something or how was that done? Um, I believe um, I wrote it down also. All right, and then I believe you indicated he held up a letter for you to read. Yes. Is that correct? Correct. How many pages was the letter, if you recall? It was very lengthy. Um, I did not complete reading all of it um, because he took part of it away after I had gotten to a certain point in the letter. How far did you read in the letter? I read several pages. And you said at some point he took the rest of the letter away? Yeah. Okay. Um, sitting here today in 1993, do you remember every word that was written in the several pages you read? Not every single word. Okay, can you tell me essentially what the letter said that you read that Lyle Menendez held up for you that day? Um, the letter just said that he was very sorry that he had had to lie to me for so long. Um, and, but that the truth was that he had killed his parents, he and Eric, and that the reason was that Eric had been abused by his father and Lyle had been abused by his mother. And was it th at that po point that you stopped reading or was it at a different point? That was when I stopped reading. And when you stopped reading, did you say anything to him? Yes. What did you say? I said, I, did, I don't believe you. And then what happened? Um, then he cried and I cried and uh, I never did get to finish reading the letter. He How pulled long? it away. Pardon me? He pulled it away. All right, so when you got to the point of letter, the letter in which there was an indication that the father had molested Eric and the mother had molested Lyle, was that as far as you read? Yes. Okay. And how long did you stay there at the jail uh, within Lyle Menendez's presence after you had read that? Um, I was there probably for at least another 20 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes. What were you doing during that period of time? Crying. At some point after that, did you break up with Lyle Menendez? Yes. About how long after this particular incident was it? Um, shortly after, um, I would say several weeks to a month afterwards. Did you have any further discussions with Lyle Menendez about what you'd seen in the letter after you'd seen the letter? Yes. And were those discussions at the county jail? Yes. Now, um, sometime not during the conversation that you've just related to us, but at another time, um, did you have a conversation with Lyle Menendez involving a movie called At Close Range? Yes. And was that on a different occasion from the occasion you've just told us about? Yes, it was. May I approach, please, Your Honor, with Exhibit 248? Yes. Now, in November of 1992, did you give a statement to the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office? Yes. And was that um, to myself and Mr. Kuriyama and Detective Zoller, and there was a court reporter, like the lady sitting in front of you, who took it all down? Correct. Okay. And I'm going to show you a portion of the transcript, which I believe was shown to you earlier today before you testified. Did you get a chance to review this exhibit, which is 248? Yes. And is this transcript um, what you told Mr. Kuriyama, myself, and Detective Zoller? Is this a portion of what you told us on November the 30th of 1992? Yes. Regarding the movie at close range? Correct. Thank you. Now, at some point, did you ever ask Lyle Menendez 
why he hadn't run away. Yes. Do you remember during which conversation it was that you asked him why he had not run away? I believe that it was a conversation that <coughs> when he told me that he and Eric had killed mm -hmm. their parents. Okay. But I believe you've indicated that you had subsequent conversations with him after this, the first one where you found out? Correct. Okay. And what did he tell you in regards to running away? He just said that he would have liked to run away, but Eric did not want to. And that's what he told you during one of these conversations, after you found out he was responsible for the death of his parents? Correct. Okay. I have nothing further on this witness at this time. The agreement still is that the next portion would be before both juries? Okay. Um, let me s see if we have jurors outside, and um, we'll do a... Um, count of our jurors, the blue jury. And we now have the blue jury in the courtroom as well, and we'll now resume with the examination of the witness before both juries, cross-examination. I believe that uh, when we had both of the juries here, you began uh, your testimony today by talking about a conversation uh, that you had with Eric Menendez. Is that correct? Correct. And can you tell me, to the best of your recollection, when that conversation took place? Uh, the spring of 1989. Okay, now you had said earlier spring or summer, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And, but you think now that it wasn't summer, but that it was spring? I think it was the spring. And when you say spring, what, what months are you talking about? I'm not sure to be exact. Okay, well can you get close for us? Um, it could have been around spring break, so March or April. And would it have been uh, a visit that you made to California with Lyle Menendez? Correct. And how long were you out here? I do not recall. And do you remember if it was for a day or if it was for when a week? When I came to visit California, it was usually for at least a week, sometimes two. Okay. So you think that this was a week or two weeks that you were here? It could have Is been. Is that correct? It could have been. And you think it was either March or April? It could have been, yes. Okay, well, when you say it could have been, you'd said spring or summer, right. so I take it we're talking late spring, early summer, or? Sometime before April, I do know that. Okay, before, so it wouldn't have it been could in have, April. could have been in the month of April, yes, because Lyle and I did break up in late April. Okay, so you believe that it was, you were here in April, that's your best estimate at this point in time? It could have been March or it could have been April. Okay, but one of those two months. Is that correct? Yes. And you were here for a week or two weeks. Is that correct? It could have been, yes. I, I don't remember exactly. Well, give me the range. It wasn't a one-day trip, I take it. I rarely came out to California for one day. Okay. So could it, have been, it could have been a long weekend. It could have been four days or it could have been two weeks. Okay. So it could have been a four-day weekend up to two weeks mm -hmm. and it could have been in March or in April. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. And when you came out here I take it that Lyle was with you the entire time, is that correct? Objection begs to point. Uh, we're talking about this visit, <coughs> Your Honor. The spring of 89 visit. Was Lyle with you? Yeah, he was, he was present, correct. The whole time, okay. And was Eric there the whole time? I do not remember that. 
and was Mrs. Menendez there the whole time? That I don't remember either. And was Mr. Menendez there the whole time? I don't recall. What things did you do on that trip? Do you remember anything else about it? Play tennis. I just was there visiting Lyle, basically. Okay. Now, visiting Lyle because he was living there at the time? Or because he was home visiting his parents? I don't remember if he was on spring break or if he was out of school at that time. I don't recall. What do you mean, out of school at that time? Well, Lyle went to Princeton, then he took a semester off, and then he was working. And... But this was the spring of 89? Correct. Do you remember whether he was in Princeton the spring of 89? Um, yes, he was. So if he was with you... It must have been spring break. Which would have been when, do you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. I don't know when Princeton, I don't recall when Princeton has their breaks. Okay. And do you remember any other friends of his or of yours that you saw when you were out here? Um, that particular trip? I'm sure Edward Fenno could have been out there because Edward did live with the family for a time. Okay, but do you remember seeing him on that trip? I can't recall specifically. I don't remember. And do you remember anything you did on that trip? Played tennis, went out with Lyle to dinner, you know, those type of things that we did every day. Right. But you don't have a particular memory that you went to Disneyland or you went to Catalina or you saw a particular movie? No, I don't. You recall. don't remember any restaurant that you ate at? No. Not. That was a long time ago. Okay. Do you remember anything <coughs> about that trip in specific other than the conversation you've just related to us? Just that uh, I was here visiting and... You don't remember the date you arrived? Not exactly, no, I do, do you, not. Do you remember the airline you came out on? No. Do you remember the date you left? No. Do you, and you don't remember any activities from that entire trip? Is that well, correct? Yes, I do remember seeing Lyle and Eric and his whole family. So, and Lyle, as, as a matter of fact, Lyle and I did go to a play in Westwood. I do recall that. What did you see? We saw um, Hurley Burley. And where was that? What theater? At the Westwood Playhouse. I do remember that. And who went with you? Anybody? Just Lyle and I. And do you remember, um, you said that you remember now Mrs. Menendez and Mr. Menendez and Eric being around. Is that yes, correct? yes. But you don't remember for how much of the visit? No. Just some of it? They could have been there every day. I don't recall. Okay. Now, you testified that you went into Eric's bedroom. You're standing in the doorway of Eric's bedroom. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Correct. And how did the conversation get started? I do not recall exactly. What was... Was I really, it your I, custom to talk about Lyle's hairpiece to other people? No, um, it was not. Okay, so this was something that he was self-conscious about, I take it. It was a private matter, in okay. a way, you know. So how did the conversation come up with you and Eric? Did you bring it up, or did Eric bring it up? I believe Eric brought it up because he was had been surprised. Well, what I'm just wondering what triggered the conversation. Were you standing in the doorway having a conversation with him, or just walking by, or what? Um, I believe I was, I remember just standing in the doorway as I often, you know, came by to just say hi to Eric or whatever, or passing by, popped my head in to say hi to him. Okay. And he said, what a surprise. Well, I believe we had been talking and he, he brought it up. Okay. And what did he say? He just, he was kind of laughing, um, and that's why I do remember it so well, because he was laughing and he was surprised that he never knew before. Uh, and that uh, he just thought Lyle always had perfect hair and he couldn't believe that his hair was always so perfect. And this conversation was March or April of 1989? That is what I remember, yes. Now, you were working at that time, weren't you? Correct. Where were you working, Mrs. Pesarsic? Um, I would have been um, teaching tennis and playing tennis on the Women's Pro Tennis Tour. Spring of 89? Correct. That's your memory? Um, yes, because I played uh, on the women's tennis tour. Yes. 
Are you as sure of that as you are of your testimony about the hairpiece? Yes. You are that sure? I'm sure. And did you have any other job the spring of 89? Uh, I was also attending school in the spring of 1989. And did you have any other job? Um, I was I was a waitress also. Where were you a waitress? In several restaurants. And in which restaurants in particular? Um, TGI Fridays. Mm -hmm. And I was also, I did that for a short period of time as I was teaching tennis lessons. And then I was also at a Mexican restaurant too that I can't recall the name of that. How's Casa Lupita sound? That was it. Thank you. And you were working at Casa Lupita in the spring of 89, is that correct? Correct. And you were also teaching tennis? Correct. You were also on the tennis tour? Yes, you I were also going times. to school? Correct. And you were also working at TGI Fridays, is that correct? No, I did not work at TGI Fridays and the Mexican restaurant at the same time. And, Your Honor, may I approach? estimate of which, if it was March, which week in March it would have been that you were at the Menendez home? No, I cannot. So you don't know if it would be the first week of March? I, it was a long time ago. I do not remember. Or the second week of March? I don't know. I can't remember. records for Jamie Pizarcic from Casa Lupita for the spring of 1989. Prosecution hasn't had a chance to see them, but since I need to go with, through them with Ms. Pizarcic, um, we, we can perhaps well. do it at the same time. Are all of those envelopes um, uh, containers for the same information? They all, they all relate to different days. Okay. For the same employer? That's correct. All right, Maybe 367 then. Thank you collectively, but um, if we're going to refer to them separately, we can refer to remark them. Okay. I'd like to, if we do them separately, then I would request permission to just do uh, letters A and B and C, etc. Okay, if we have to, but let's see if we, if we have to do that. Thank you. I'd ask you to look at the documents before okay. you. Have you ever seen the work records from Casa Lupita before? Uh, I, I can't say that I haven't. I don't, I don't, they don't look familiar to me right now. And is this a statement of tip income from Casa Lupita? recognize your name on it? Yes, and that's my signature. And this is for the period through March 12, 1989. Is that correct? I didn't see a date. Yes. Okay. Can you go through, starting in March, and ask you, do you see a document marked March 1, 1989? Correct. And does it appear you were working that day? Yes. Okay. And would you turn the page and look at March 2nd, 1989? Mm-hmm. Does it appear you're working March 2nd? Correct. And would you look at March 3rd? I don't see my name here. your name? Yes. So you're working, working March 3rd? Correct. Okay. 
Did you look at March 4th? Mm -hmm. Are you working that day? Yes. Did you look at March 5th? Mm-hmm. March 6th? Mm-hmm. Is that yes? Yes, it is. March 7th? I worked a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. March 8th? I believe that you're off that day. Do you see your name? No, I do not. Okay, would you look at March 9th? Mm-hmm. It's there. March 10th. I believe you're off that day. But would you double check and see if you see your name? She did. I believe. Is that correct? Well, let me go see. Yes, it is there, March 9th. March 10th, I believe you're off. Would you look at March 11th? Yes. Yes, I am working there. March 12th? Yes, I am there. March 13th? Uh, is there more records? Excuse me? Yes, I do. If there are more, they stopped on the 12th. Okay. Is this your tip reporting sheet ending March 26th? Yes. Okay. These are documents similar to those you previously reviewed. Okay. okay. Would you look at, we left March 12th, you were working. Would you look at March 13th? Yes. Okay. And March 14th? Yes. And March 15th? Yes. And March 16th? Mm-hmm. Yes. And March 17th, I believe you had off. Would you look and just see? Double check if your name is there. I do not see it. March 18th? Yes. March 19th, I believe you're off. Would you look at March 20th? Yes. March 21st? Mm-hmm. Okay, again, are you trying to establish something when she says yes? Yes, you're working that yes. day, I take it? Yes. Okay. Would you look at the 22nd? What date was that I just looked at? The 21st? The 21st. Okay. I believe you're off the 22nd, 23rd. If you would look at those. Correct. 24th. Correct. 25th. These are days she's off. Correct. And the 26th you're off, is that correct? Yes, I do not see my name. Okay. group of documents I'm handing you start out with the tip receipts for the period up to April 9th. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And these records begin March 27th. Is that correct? Yes. And I believe you're off that day. Is that right? Correct. And 28th, are you working? Um, well, it has my name scratched out. The hour scratched out, so I do not know. Okay. 29th? Yes. 30th? I believe you're off. Is that correct? Yes. And the 31st, I believe you're working. Is that correct? 
Yes. Turning to April 1st. The first, are you working? Yes. And the second? Um, it, you have my name highlighted, but there's no check mark here, so I do not know. So your name is listed there as working? Yes, but there's no check mark. So that's a question mark. The it, as a matter of fact, working? it says out right here. Okay. And the third, are you working? Yes. Fourth, I believe you're off. Yes, it looks that way. And the fifth, are you working? Yes. And the sixth, are you off? I do not see my name. The seventh, are you working? Yes. And the eighth? Correct. And the ninth? Yes. And the tenth? Does this package begin with another tip statement with your name on it? Yes, it does. And do these documents begin on the 10th of April? Correct. And were you working on the 10th of April? Yes. And the 11th? Um, has a question or mark here. The 12th? Yes. 13th and 14th, I believe you're off. Would you look at those to make sure? I don't see my name here. Here being the 13th? Correct. And the 14th? Uh, I do not see my name on the 14th either. The 15th? Yes. 16th? Yes. 17th? Yes. 18th? Yes. 19th? <coughs> yes. 20th? Mm -hmm. Yes. 21st? Yes. 22nd? Yes. 23rd? Yes. 24th? I'm done here. Is that one Cindy of the next package? These records appear to begin on April 24th. Correct. That's correct. Yes. And were you working on the 24th? Yes. And the 25th? Yes. And the 26th? Yes. 27th, I believe you were off. Did you look and make sure? I don't see my name on the 27th. Okay. 28th? Yes. The 29th? Excuse me, 28th is working or not? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And the 30th? Yes. Um, no, it does not have a check mark here, so I do not know. So your name is highlighted in the no check mark, so that's a questionable. Correct. Now, Ms. Pizarro, if you would look at the calendar I've been marking as you went along, 
Mm -hmm. which is dated March of 89. Okay. Does it appear that there's only one period in March in which you were not working for a, a period of time over a weekend? Yes, there does. Well, there's several here. So the week, if the weekends in March, uh, the Saturdays in March were March 4th, 11th, and 18th were the first three Saturdays, you were working those days? Yes, I was. Is that correct? Yes. And the only Saturday you were not working was the 25th of March. Is that correct? Correct. So the only period that would have been available in this entire two-month period for a trip of more than two days to California would have been the period of the 20th. 2nd through the 27th of March. Is that correct? That is correct. And this restaurant we're talking about is in New Jersey. Yes. Is that correct? Now, looking at that, would that would it be your assumption then that your trip to California was during the 22nd through the 27th of March? Judge, you call us for a conclusion on part of the witness. Sustained. Was it fair to say, Ms. Bizarsic, that that is the only period in which you are not working in New Jersey? <clears throat> During that month? During the period of March and April. On the weekend? Yes. Well, for more than two days at a time. No. There's a period in April as well. There's a two-day period in April as well. No, what I'm saying is for more than two days. Oh, correct. And over a weekend. Yes. Now, is it your testimony that during the time that you were visiting and you heard this Can you move forward? conversation, it was a time in which uh, Mr. and Mrs. Menendez were there for at least part of the time? Is that correct? I'm sorry, could you restate that? Yes. The time when you say you had this conversation with Eric was correct. a time in which Mr. and Mrs. Menendez were there at least part of the time? Yes. And it's a time when Eric was there. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Now, when you talked to the police about this incident, you told them that you remembered it being a situation where uh, Mrs. Menendez was saying something, and that had triggered Eric's comment. Do you remember telling the police that? That she had said something? Yes. No, I do not recall saying that. Did I ask you um, at the break, or did Mrs. Bazanich and I at the break, ask you to read over the report that Detective Zoller had written regarding your interview with them on this subject? Yes. And did I ask you to make any corrections that you thought were appropriate? Yes. Okay. So in the report, if I tell you it says um, that you were at the house in Beverly Hills and you over, when Eric overheard Mrs. Menendez talking about the hairpiece, would that be correct or not? I do not recall seeing, I'm sorry, I do not recall seeing that in the report that you asked me to read. Okay, I, I asked you a half hour ago, right? Right. And I asked you to review a report that's one and a half pages long? Yes. And that particular section is even highlighted, is that correct? I and don't it know. says I don't know. that you were at the house in Beverly Hills when Eric overheard their mother talking about the hairpiece. She remembers that Eric laughed and said, I can't believe it. That's why his hair is never out of place. I do not remember that as being true. I remember saying that I, that is what Eric told me. I did not. Okay, so you were interviewed November 2nd, 1993 by Detective Zoller. Right. And was anybody with him when you were interviewed by him? Um, by Lieutenant Zoller? It yes. was Lieutenant Zoller. And he wrote this report I've just read to you. Correct. And I asked you to read the report and tell me if anything in it was wrong. Is that correct? Correct. And you did not correct that? I did not remember seeing that, no. Okay. And so you're saying now you never told Detective Zoller that this conversation came about when, uh, when Eric overheard his mother making a comment? I don't remember telling Detective Zoller that it was because he over Eric overheard his mother. So Detective Zoller would be lying in this report Detection then? Sustained. When you read through this report in the hall, correct? Uh, there was nothing about it that seemed inconsistent to you about with given what you had testified to? I do not remember um, that part being in that. 
I'm sorry, I don't. Okay, so you're saying you never told Detective Zoller that this conversation came up in a situation in which Mrs. Menendez was involved in the conversation? I remember telling Detective Zoller that I had the conversation with Eric. Okay. But you didn't tell him anything about overhearing I don't recall that, Mrs. No. Menendez? No, I do not. And that is not how it happened, right? I do not recall that, no. I just recall having the conversation with Eric, having Eric okay. bring it I, up. I guess my question of you is, do you believe that what Detective Zoller wrote down from an interview with you less than a month ago mm -hmm. is the more accurate version, or the version you're giving here today is the more accurate version? Objection, argumentative response. Let me do this. Were you ever present at the Beverly Hills house when Mrs. Menendez's car was stolen? I do not remember. Would you remember if a car was stolen? I don't know. I mean, if it was my car, I'd remember. Okay. And if it was you were staying in the house and Mrs. Menendez's car was stolen, do you think that would be something that you would remember? It might be. And if I told you that Mrs. Menendez's car was stolen on March 24th, which is the only weekend in that two-month period you weren't working, does that suggest to you that maybe you weren't there that weekend? Um, I don't recall her car being stolen on any specific day, if that's what you're asking Do you me. ever remember her car being stolen? It could have been stolen. I'd but you don't remember? No, I do not. But it's possible. You'd be willing to say that it... You, it could have happened, and you could have known about it. Is that right? Do you know what the Easter Bowl is? Yes. What's the Easter Bowl? It is a tennis tournament. And where is it held? In Florida. And is it held every year? Yes. And how long does it last? I've never played in the tournament, so I don't know. Are tournaments usually one-day things? Just many days. Objection mm -hmm. irrelevant. Overall. The tournaments usually last more than one day? Two days and up to two weeks. And you don't know anything about the Easter Bowl? I've never played in the tournament. Do you know when it's generally held? At Easter. Okay. <laughs> Do you know that um, in 1989, the Easter Bowl took place over the weekend of the Do you know that the Easter Bowl in 1989 was played from March 17th to March 25th? Do you know that? No. Excuse me, Honor. Since facts not evidence, I'll Overall, the answer will stand. Do you know that Eric Menendez played in the Easter Bowl? I know that. Year? No, I don't recall. I mean, uh, Eric played a lot of tennis tournaments. Okay. And do you know that Mr. and Mrs. Menendez accompanied him to the Easter Bowl in Miami? I'm sure they probably did. March 17th and March 25th? Objection. Assume facts not known. That has to the time period. If Eric Menendez was at the Easter Bowl March 17th <coughs> to March 25th, does it seem unlikely that he was home for the conversation you've related? Well, Objection. Assume facts not known. That improper methodology. Overall, I have not stated that I had the conversation with Eric on that weekend that you are alluding to. Well, you said it was either March or April. Is it that could right? have, It could have been late February. I do not remember exactly when that conversation was. Okay, so before it was spring or summer. It's spring. And now it could be February? Objection argument. Overall. Now it could be February? I cannot remember the exact date of that conversation. Well, when you say, do you think of February as spring or summer? 
I would consider February early spring. In New Jersey? You were working at Casa Lupita in February also, weren't you? Correct. When in February do you think this might have been? I do not know. And if I show you you were working every weekend in February, would you then move back to January? I don't recall the exact time of this conversation. I think I've stated that. But you did say spring or summer of 89. Correct. If I show you you were working every weekend in February, will you then go back to January? Overall. I cannot give you the exact date of the conversation. My question is because it is if I prove to you you were working every weekend in February, mm -hmm. will you then go back to January for when this conversation took it, place? It could have been. I do not it could have recall. Been January. It could have been. I remember the conversation is what I, I stated. See. And if I prove to you that you weren't there in January, will you then go back to December of eighty eight? Yeah. Sustain. How did you happen to come up with the spring or summer designation for this conversation? That's when I thought that it had occurred. interviewed by the prosecution in November. Um, this I November? The with the conversation was tape recorded, is that correct? This November? Yes. No, it was not. I'm sorry, last November. Last November. So about 1992. I'm not sure what year we're in. <laughs> was it uh, yes. tape recorded? Yes. <coughs> and did you ever get a chance to look at that transcript? Yes, I did. And did you review it to see if it was accurate? Yes. And one of the things that you were asked about was the use of a phone card. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Correct. And the prosecution was very interested because there were... Honor, I would object to this characterization of the prosecution's interest. In Objection argument. sustained. Sorry, I'll rephrase, rephrase that. The, question. the prosecution asked you about the use of the phone card because a call had been made the night that Mr. and Mrs. Menendez died. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Objection to the form of the question is assuming facts, not an evidence, an argument. Sustain. Rephrase the question. Answer stricken. What do you remember being asked um, about I... the use of the phone card? I remember being asked if um, I was given permission to use that card okay. at any time. Now, when do you believe that you broke up with Lyle Menendez prior to the death of his parents? Um, in, I believe it was in April, late April. Did Lyle Menendez do something special for you on Valentine's Day that year with regard to the dorm room the two of you were living in? I never lived in a dorm room Here. with Lyle Menendez. He didn't decorate the dorm room for you? I don't recall. Okay. Do you remember having an argument with him with regard to him, ha him having sent flowers to a former girlfriend named Stacy? No. And. Do you remember telling the police and the prosecution that you split up with Lyle Menendez because you had had an argument with the roommate you had at the time, Donovan Goudreau, mm -hmm. and then Lyle pursued the friendship with Donovan Goudreau and you were upset about him not taking your side, something like that? Your objection, um, this is hearsay and it's um, just being, just testing your memory. Overall, overall. Please restate that. Why did you and Lyle Menendez break up in the spring of 89? Well, we had been engaged at the time. And um, one, of the reason, one of the reasons was because I had lived with Donovan Goodrell. And um, Donovan had, or some money had disappeared from 
my apartment. Um, and I just did not feel comfortable living with him at the time. That was one of the reasons. Okay, so is it fair to say that after you and La Menendez split up, then La Menendez and Donovan became very good friends? Yes. They were friends at the same time during our relationship as well. Okay. And were you still involved with La Menendez when he took a trip to California with Donovan, or was that after your split up? I don't recall. You don't remember? If you were going with him and he was gone for, say, a week to California, do you think you might remember? It was a long time ago. So you don't remember? I don't recall that instance. Do you, do you remember Donovan moving into the dorm room with him? I do. Yeah, I remember, because I kicked Donovan out of our apartment. Okay. And do you remember when Donovan left Lyle's dorm room? No, I do When not. he was thrown out of there? No, I do not. Not exactly. Do you remember how long Lyle Menendez and Donovan Goudreau spent time together and Donovan lived in his dorm room? No. Would it be fair to say that you were not really involved with Lyle Menendez during the period of time that he and Donovan were very close? Um, there was a part of where, when we were not, yes. Okay. How much of a part? How long? I don't remember exactly. I mean, Lyle and I broke up in, as I said, late April, so approximately that time. Have you followed this case much? No. Do you watch it on television? I try not to. Do people tell you what is being said, however? Not really. I don't listen. I don't. It's not a topic of conversation. So no one tells you anything about the testimony in this case? Um, is that I mean, your testimony? I, you know, people have mentioned things, but, you know, newspaper, TV, but I don't follow it. When you say newspaper and TV, is that you read the newspaper and watch the TV, or people tell you about what's in the newspaper and what's on the TV? Well, I read the papers and I watch the news and, you know, I don't... So you have an idea of what's been going on in the cases. It's reported in the newspaper and Correct. on the news. Is that true? Correct. And when, when you were interviewed by the police, they asked you something about the use of the Menendez family phone card. Is yes. that correct? Yes, it is. And what specifically did they ask you about it? Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, they asked me if I had permission to use it or if I had ever used the family phone card before. Okay. And why did they ask you that? Did they explain it to you? Objection. Calls for speculation and hearsay. Objection sustained. Was it directed at calls that were made particularly around the death of the parents? Yes. And did you have permission to use that phone card? Yes, I did. Who gave it to you? Lyle gave it to not only myself but to my sisters and Lyle's mother also had given it to me the week prior because we had talked and I was calling her often and calling for the, the tennis tournament that Lyle was supposed to come to. Okay, now this is August of 89, is that correct? Yes. Now, is it your testimony that you spoke to Lyle Menendez personally about being in that tournament? Yes. And do you remember telling the police a year ago when you were interviewed that all of your arrangements had been with Mrs. Menendez? Well, Lyle and I had discussed going to the tournament together, obviously, or he wouldn't have even known about the tennis tournament. How do you know he knew about it? Well, we had planned on going to the tennis tournament. When had you made those arrangements? I don't recall exactly. Lyle and I had, as I said before, seen each other several times during the summer. When did you see him? Several times during the summer. What months? Um, I don't recall exactly which months. Where did you see him? I was living in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. So he would come back there and see you? Yes. Were you two going together at the time? No, we were just friendly at the time. How many times did he see you? I don't recall exactly. Did anybody else see him see you that summer? I don't recall. So yeah, would he come I'm into assuming. your workplace or yeah. would you go out with friends? Yeah, he came to, he came to the, the uh, 
Casa Lapita a couple times. So other people would have seen him there seeing you, is that correct? There's no cause for speculation. Sustained. Now, when you told the prosecution that you made the arrangements with Mrs. Menendez, mm -hmm. this was over a year ago, is that correct? They're conveyed as to what was over a year ago. The, the interview with the prosecution that we've yeah. talked about, the taped interview, was over a year ago, is that correct? Yes, it was. And in that taped interview, you talked about having made the arrangements with Mrs. Menendez, is that correct? Well, Mrs. Menendez and I had talked about the tennis tournament, yes, that is okay. correct. And you told them Mrs. Menendez had given you permission to use the phone credit card to arrange this tennis tournament for you and Lyle to play in together, is that correct? Correct. And did Mrs. Menendez, was she sort of trying to help you two get back together? Certainly calls for speculation. Sustained. Did you, in your conversations with Mrs. Menendez, talk about this would be a good way for you and Lyle to get back together and that was something she was interested in seeing happen? I don't recall. So you think she might have? She might have said, you know, we, we really would like to see Lyle going with you and so we'd like, I'm going to help you set this up. Certainly I don't. Calls for speculation here. Sustained to the form of the question. Since this case has, or this trial has begun, you are now aware, aren't you, of how Mrs. Menendez felt about you? Your Honor, I'd object to the, um, the question as lack of foundation. Sustained. Are you aware of the things Mrs. Menendez said about you? I know how Mrs. Menendez felt about me. From things you've learned while this trial has progressed? No. When did Mrs. Menendez give you permission to use the phone card? During that, at that time, she had, around when we were setting up the tennis tournament. Which was when? Well, the tournament was uh, that last weekend in August, I believe. Um, so prior to that. How much prior to that? I don't recall. A couple days, a couple weeks? Well, usually tournament entries are several weeks before, so at least several weeks, if not more. And she gave you permission to use that card so that you could set up his involvement in the tennis tournament, is that correct? Yes. And Lyle didn't show up at the tennis tournament, is that correct? Correct. And did you call him and say, what's going on, why aren't you here? No, the tournament director informed me that he never received an entry. But when Lyle didn't, I mean, had you talked about where you were going to stay or when he was going to arrive, anything like that? No. So We were, were just friends at the time. But you yeah. were arranging, his mother had given you permission to use the long distance calling card so that you could arrange for Lyle to be in the tennis tournament, right? Mm hmm Yes? Yes. And you and Lyle had talked about you being in that tennis tournament, right? Occasionally, yes. And had you talked about where he was going to stay or when he was going to arrive? I don't recall. And when the tournament started, how, how many days long was this tournament? It was the weekend, you know, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, and your best recollection is you arrived when? I believe I stated before Friday. Okay. And when you got there on Friday and he wasn't there, did you call and say, what's going on? I don't remember. You would have used the credit card to do it, wouldn't you? I, I don't remember. You know, I, not necessarily. Did you call him on Saturday and say, why aren't you here? No, I was playing the tennis tournament at the time. And did you call him on Sunday and say, what happened, that you didn't show up? His, his name was never entered in the tennis tournament. But Miss you had talked to him about going, correct? correct? Mm -hmm. And you never called him to say, why didn't you show up? Well, it was not stated as definite that he would show up. He expressed some interest in coming to the tennis tournament. When did he express some interest in coming to the tennis tournament? At some time during the summer when I mentioned I was going to the tennis tournament. And you said he had given you permission to use the credit card, is that correct? Correct. When had he given you permission to uh, use the credit card? Probably a year prior. Okay. And um, during could, the time could have been that, longer. During the time that you weren't going with him, I take it you didn't use the credit card then, it was just because of this tournament. Is that um, correct? I don't recall ever using it unless Lyle gave me the permission to use it. Okay, but what I'm talking about is during the period that you weren't going with him. Well, I may have if he told and called me and if we had talked during the summer, you know. But would you have used it just to call friends or call your family or something? Well, he gave unrelated? us... Excuse me, Jack, Sorry. Overall. 
You may answer. Um, he gave that card to both myself, my sister, and my sisters um, to say, you know, if you want to call, he's call your mom, my mom. He just used it very casually. Did he use the credit card all the time himself? Yes. Did he always use it to make phone calls? Yes. Even local phone calls? Yes. I remember that. But you said that you believe that you broke up with him sometime in May of 89. I think I said the last. At least May. Maybe least even April. earlier? Mm -hmm. Possibly April? Could have been, yes. OK. And my question of you is, after you broke up with him, did you continue to use the phone credit card? I do not remember. Would it assist you to look at phone records? Can I approach, Your Honor? Yes. indicated that you had permission to use this credit card from Mrs. Menendez to arrange the uh, tennis tournament. Yes. For life. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. And so who would you have needed to call to arrange that? Um, tournament directors, herself. Wh where you know. would the tournament directors have been? Um, probably in Vermont. That's where the tennis tournament was. Okay. And she was in California? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So you would have had permission to call numbers in Vermont and numbers in California. Uh, Is that correct? Overall. Um, I believe that would be correct, yes. You know, I'd like to mark for identification at this point. Our next number is? 368. Ms. Pizarrasek, I'd like you to take a look at the records for August, starting August 18th, mm -hmm. 1989. Mm -hmm. And I've highlighted certain numbers in yellow, is that correct? Yes, you have. And would you take a look at those phone numbers and tell me if you recognize, I believe these records have the date, the time called, the city called, and the phone number, and in some cases, the person who's called, mm -hmm. and in some cases, the number from which it originated. Correct. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And would you start at the top of the list? We're just dealing with August 18th now. OK. Do you recognize this phone number in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania? No. Well, what about the numbers in Georgia? No. What about Huntington, West Virginia? Um, I don't recognize that, but I recognize the name. And who is this person? Um, that person it was a friend of my sister's. And what's that person's name? Ike Gross. Now, this is the number that these phone calls are made from. Do you okay. recognize this number? That would be my sister's phone number. OK, so we have on the 18th of August, one, two, three calls at least that she's made on that phone credit mm -hmm. card. Is that correct? Right. OK, moving down, do you recognize any of the numbers? No. Either would you look at both the number called, mm -hmm. person called, or where the call came from and tell me if you recognize any of those? No, I do not. Okay, what about this call from Vermont to someone named Jim in Trenton? I don't recall. I don't, it doesn't ring a bell. You have to speak up. It does not ring a bell. I mean, it does not look familiar. Okay. On the 19th, we have. Another call from uh, to the same person you've identified before as a friend of your sister's. Is that correct? This person right here? Yes. I Grochi. Gross, yes. Gross. Correct. Okay. And we have another two calls to someone named Jim. Okay. We have a couple calls to Vermont. Is okay. that correct? Yes. And then we have a call to James E. Pizarsik. Who is that? That's my father. I was on the 19th. Mm hmm Do you have any connection to the tennis tournament? Um, 
what is this number right here? Is that where it was from? Yes. That would be from my sister. Okay. And on uh, the 20th, we have some calls to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes, it is. And do you recognize the numbers that... Uh, and we have another call to your father, is that correct? Correct. And where the, who, who's making those calls? Those would... Our Birmingham, Alabama would be one sister, and that is m the other sister. So your sisters were using the phone? Yes, I, tol I told you Lyle gave them permission to do that. Okay, even during the time you were broken up. You I didn't call them after you broke up and said, look, Lyle and I split up. We split up in April or May, and now it's August. You shouldn't be using the credit card? I don't believe if I would have, you know, that would have been a topic of conversation. Okay. What was your phone number at the time? <laughs> Where were you living? What date is this? August of 89. August of 89, I would have been in Lawrenceville. Okay. And do you remember what your phone number was? No, I do not. Okay, would you look at the entries now for August 16th? Mm hmm And can you tell me whether you recognize any of these numbers again? Well, just the, the numbers that you had pointed out before. More calls by your sister. We have a call to someone named Richard Garrett. Who's Richard Garrett? Rich Garrett um, from Birmingham. Who's Richard Garrett? I don't remember. I don't know. Richard Garrett was your roommate when you were attending Mercer College. Do you oh, remember that? Rick, yes. That Richard Garrett. Okay, yes. Yes, he was a roommate. Yes. And what about Everett Miller? Nope. Does not sound look familiar. What about the number that it's called from? Uh, well, Huntington, West Virginia is where my sister attended school. Okay. So we have the call to Rick Garrett for mm -hmm. 17 minutes. We have the call to Everett Miller from your sister for 25 minutes. These are all on the 16th of August. We have the call to James Pizarsic. I take it that's your father yes, for it 15 is. minutes? From Merciville. From Merciville. Is okay. this your number? Again, I don't know the exact number what it was. Did you use this card to call your father? As I said, Lyle gave me the permission to, to use the card. We're in August of 89. Did Correct. you use the card to call your father? I, cr I could have. And was that part of arranging the tournament? Can you it, argue your Overall, your answer? It could have been. I do not recall. Your father was involved in the tournament? No. In Vermont? No. And um, on the 17th of August now, we have another call to Ike Gross, which I think you've said is your sister's. Mm -hmm. um, we have another call to Richard Garrett, which is the Rick Garrett, mm -hmm. you remember. We have another call to your father on the 17th. From Huntington, West Virginia, yes. Excuse me, the last call to the father, where was that from? West Virginia, her sister. And we have on the 14th of August, Another call to Richard Garrett, is mm -hmm. that correct? Yes. And on the 15th, another call to Richard Garrett, is that correct? Mm hmm and From Birmingham, Alabama, yes. And a second call to, and a second call that day to Richard Garrett. Okay. And a third call that day to Richard okay. Garrett. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And we have a number of other calls to Bethel Park. Mm -hmm. Who's in Bethel Park? Um, Bethel Park does not look, I do not know. Well, has uh, your father's phone name number. listed next yes. to it? Does that help? Yes. He does not live in Bethel Park, though. Okay, but that's, these records show his phone number with Bethel Yeah, that Park. is the correct number. Okay. That is actually not my father's number. That is my mother's number. Okay. And so this is on the 16th of August, there's a call to Bethel Park, your mm -hmm. mother's number. Is that correct? Correct. And on the 11th of August, there's another call to Bethel Park, mm -hmm. some more calls to Birmingham, more calls to your mother's. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And yes. We have on the 13th an eight minute call, a 27 minute call, and a 14 minute call to your mother's phone number. Is that correct? Correct. And those are from Birmingham? Mm -hmm. And that's one of your sisters? Correct. Okay. And we have on the 10th another call to Richard Garrett. Um, who works at Horn's department store? My mother does. And how long is that phone call? Nine minutes. Okay. We have an additional number of calls 
If I suggest to you that the yellow highlighting in here represents phone calls made by you or your family, mm -hmm. which date back to June. Correct. Is it your testimony you had permission in June to use the family credit card to make these phone calls? Objection irrelevant as to what the family credit card Overall. Um, is it your testimony that you and your family members had the right to make sometimes as many as 11 long distance phone calls a day to other family members on the Menendez phone card? Um, all I know is Lyle had given that card out, the number out. I did not know, nor I'm sure my family did not know that it was a Menendez family phone card. Who did they think was paying the bill? I Objection. You, excuse me. That assumes that's not evidence. Call for your saying the Sustained as a form of You indicated that neither you nor any of your family members knew this was the Menendez family phone card. Is that correct? Lyle. Objection irrelevant as to what her family members say the line was wrong. Overall. Lyle simply gave that card number to my family, my sisters, and myself, and said that it was fine to use the card. Who did you think paid the bill? I don't know. Did you contact Lyle at the end of every month or Mrs. Menendez and say, gee, would you look over the phone bill and tell us which card? Did you ever pay for any of those phone car calls? I was never billed for those phone calls. Did you ever talk to the parents about the fact that you were using the card, that your sister was using, your sisters were using the card? Well, as I said, Mrs. Menendez had given me permission to use the card. But I believe you told us, and you told the police a year ago, that Mrs. Menendez gave you permission to use mm -hmm. this card so that you could arrange for you and Lyle to play together in a tournament in Vermont at the end of August. Is that correct? Correct. And when you were interviewed by the police, you didn't say, Lyle told me and anybody I knew to go ahead and use the card for as long as I wanted. I was not asked that question. You were asked about having the card and who gave you permission. Do you remember that? Starting on line 11, just for reference, Mrs. Bazanich says, are you talking about the phone call? Then moving down to line 20, your explanation is, prior to that, about a week or even two weeks <coughs> before, I, Lyle, was supposed to come to the tennis tournament that I was in Vermont that weekend. Question. Are you talking about the weekend of the murders? Answer, yes. Question, okay. So you were in Vermont that weekend. Answer, yes. Question at a tennis tournament. And Lyle had previously, and I'm sorry, and Lyle, comma, you had previously arranged that he would fly there. Answer, well, I had talked to his mom about it, and she was supposed to set everything up. I had sent her an entry blank for him, you know, for her to forward on to the tournament director and, you know, set up his play in the tournament. And I talked to him several times about it, you know, playing in it and was under the assumption that he was going to be there that weekend. Mrs. Menendez, well, I thought about this after we talked. Question, when I came to your house, meaning when the police came to your house? Correct. Answer at the door, question, mm-hmm. Answer, that she had given me permission to use the phone card to call her and make plans and all that kind of stuff regarding the tournament. And then when I got to the tournament in Vermont, you know, he wasn't there. Question, were you surprised? Answer, yeah, I mean, I was kind of expecting him to be there. Question, yeah, well, did you call him from Vermont? Answer, no. Now, 
I believe what you were talking about there was the police showed up at your door rather unexpectedly one time and asked you about a phone call that was made the night the parents died. Is that correct? Correct. And the next time that you were interviewed by the police was some time later. Is that correct? About a year, yes. Okay. And so when you are interviewed by them about a year later, you say to them, well, I've thought about what you asked me about the credit card. Is no, that correct? No, that is not correct. Okay. Well, tell me what's correct. I believe I corrected that statement. They had shown up at my door, and then I was questioned shortly after that. How much after that? Several weeks, I would imagine. Okay. I, or it could have been days. I don't remember exactly. All right. So when you are questioned by them several days or weeks later, you bring this up and say that you've thought about their question about you using the credit card. Is that correct? Well, they had asked me about it. And they had asked you specifically with reference to calls that were made the night that the parents died. Is that correct? Correct. And you at that time told them this, that Mrs. Menendez had given you permission to use the credit card a week or two weeks before to set up the tournament. Correct. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. You didn't say, Lyle told me and all my family members we could use it any time we wanted, did you? Yes no. or no? No. Your Honor, could we break at this point? All right, it's 10 to 5, and we'll take our recess until tomorrow morning. How much longer do you think your cross uh, will be? Uh, I'd say at least an hour. Okay, we'll see everybody back here tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Ms. Bizarzik, yesterday I believe you were testifying about the dates in which you were working at the restaurant in Princeton. Do you recall that? Correct. And I'm going to, we've marked this as 369 and I'm going to put it up on the board. And yesterday I was making red check marks as you were indicating that those were days you were working. Is that correct? Yes. And this shows March and April of 1989? Yes, it does. Correct? Yes. And I believe that you had indicated, based on your work records, that the only significant block of time uh, that you had where you were not working at the restaurant was the period from March 22nd to March 27th. Do you remember that? That's the way it appears, yes. Okay. And do you remember we talked about the Easter Bowl? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And I'd indicated to you that uh, you, you said that you believed that Mr. and Mrs. Menendez were there for part of the time and certainly Eric had to have been there. Correct. Correct. And I think we had indicated that they were in Florida from the 17th of March until the 24th of March. So I'm going to just draw a pink line through those dates. You know, I, I would object to assuming that's not an evidence. Sustained well, as to the form I, of the question or the statement actually okay. by counsel. Uh, assuming right. that we have records which show that the uh, that Eric and Mr. and Mrs. Menendez were in Florida for the dates the 17th through the 24th, that would take that period of time out. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And assuming that we had records showing Mr. and Mrs. Menendez were in New York starting on the 27th of March, that would take out that day. Is that correct? Objection. Argumentative is in spectrum of evidence. Well, with the understanding, the question just asks that uh, these assumptions be made at this point. Uh, they are just assumptions without having been proved anyway. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And you said you have no memory of Mrs. Menendez's car being stolen. Is that correct? I do not remember her car being stolen. And assuming that records show that her car was stolen on the 25th of March, and then I will use a red marker for that purpose, that would take out that Saturday. Is that correct? What do you mean by taking it out? Well, in terms of the day when she was there. If she doesn't remember the car being stolen, if the car was stolen on the 25th. What are you asking? Are you asking a question of the witness? If yes. she doesn't remember it, what is the proof? Yes. What I'm asking you is, do you remember Mrs. Menendez's car being stolen? I believe yesterday I stated that it could have been stolen, um, but 
it's nothing that comes to my memory. Okay, you don't you know? remember it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just indicating the red line is the day that the car was stolen. Is that correct? And I believe your testimony yesterday was you thought that this, this possible period in time when you could have visited from the 22nd through the 27th was spring break for Princeton. Do you remember that? I do not remember. I remember stating that it could have been. I do not recall when Princeton spring break was. Well, if I indicate to you that records show that spring break was from March 11th to March 19th, that would have been a week in which you were working. You worked the 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, and 18th of that week. Is that correct? That's what it appears. And are you aware of the fact that Donovan Boudreau came to California with Lyle Menendez for spring break that year? I do remember Lyle and Donovan taking a trip together. Yes, I do remember. Yeah. I do not recall when, when that trip was. And do you remember that Donovan testified that this was after uh, you and Lyle Menendez had broken up? Objection argument. Sustained. Objection sustained. Have you watched uh, this trial at all? Objection sustained is to watch it where? On Overall. Okay, you've clarified it on television. Um, I have seen bits and pieces of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And people also gave you information about some of the testimony. Is that correct? Mm, I don't understand what you mean by information. Did anybody ever talk to you about things that were testified to or evidence that was produced in this trial? Most of my friends know that I don't care to discuss the trial with anybody, so. Okay, but my question is, does anybody give you any information? No. So you've only watched it occasionally, yes? Correct. How many times have you watched it? I do not know. Did you watch Lyle Menendez's testimony? No, I did not. And did anybody give you any information about Lyle Menendez's testimony? I guess I don't understand what you mean by information. Did anybody talk to you about what it was he testified to? No. So you have absolutely no information about what he testified to in this trial? I believe I stated yesterday that when I have read the newspapers and seen an occasional newscast, that is, you know, but I don't remember any specifics as far as what I have seen and what I have not. Okay. And you don't remember any specifics about Donovan Boudreaux's testimony? No, I do not. Do you remember any specifics about a young woman named Christy Durant, whom Lyle met when he came out? California with Donovan. I know that Lyle did date Christy, but I don't remember any testimony was regarding. That, was that after you split up? I was what after they split up? That he dated Christy Durant. I would assume so. Can I move to strike a speculation? Sustain the answer strike. <laughs> How did you know he dated Christy? Um, he told me about her. And when he told you about her, was this something that he was confessing he had dated somebody else while you were together, or was this something that had happened when you were no longer together? Um, I believe we, he asked me who I had dated during that summer, and we had a conversation, and I asked him, you know, it's that type of conversation. Okay, so it was about people you dated after you split up, is that correct? I believe so. Uh, may I approach again, Your Honor, with the phone records, which I think yesterday we marked as... 368? Yes. Mr. Sarsic, I'm asking you to look at the same phone record you reviewed yesterday. Mm -hmm. And do you see Christie's name listed here? Yes, I do. And can you see the dates on which her name starts appearing? Mm hmm And what are those dates? Three. Commission calls for her son. What are you asking? You're asking this witness just to look at that document and show certain dates? Yes. Uh, Sustain. You indicated that your information was that um, La Menendez had dated Christy after the two of you split up. Is that correct? Well, if we split up, then I'm sure he dated a lot of different people. Okay. You know? That was your information. That's when he 
dated her was after you'd split up. I believe you just testified to that. Is that correct? Yes, as, as far as I know, my knowledge of it. <laughs> okay. And when you look at those phone records, does that does that seem to confirm <coughs> your state of mind that he dated her in the summer? Objection irrelevant. Sustain. Sustain. Do the phone records we've discussed here indicate that he was calling her in the middle of March Your Honor, 1989. Your Honor, that calls for hearsay. Sustained. It would call for conclusion on the part of the witness. Okay, assuming that the phone records indicate he was calling her the middle of March of 1989, does that cause you to revise your testimony with regard to when you split up? Objection, assume facts not in evidence and argumentative. Sustained. I'll just question whether that causes her to change her testimony or not. Objection sustained. It's pure speculation looking at it. Is it still your testimony that you were still going with Raul Menendez in March of 1989? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Now, I believe that you indicated um, on direct here yesterday that you first met Lau Menendez in the fall of 1986. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And where was it that you met him? We met in, I believe it was the Princeton area of New Jersey. And you became his girlfriend within weeks, I believe you indicated. Yes. And what month is it that, that you think you became his girlfriend? Um, I would believe it would be either late October or November of that year. And you moved into the Princeton house with him, is that correct? 13 Vegas, the Princeton house. Overall. Did you move into the, the home in Princeton? I did stay there on occasion. <coughs> when you say on occasion, how often? I do not remember. Did you live somewhere else at the time? Yes. Where did you live at the time? Um, there was a tennis coach that um, had an apartment that was housing several of the players. Is this Robbie Klaus? Yes. And so is it your testimony that you did not live with La Menendez in the Princeton house? Well, irrelevant, no. Overall. Um, I did stay there. I was traveling on the tennis tour, so I was not really living anywhere at that time. You broke your ankle during that time, didn't you? Yes, I did. Were you playing tennis with a broken ankle? No. When your ankle was broken, were you living with Val Menendez? I could have stayed there. I do not recall. I do not remember. I also went home and stayed with my family in Pennsylvania because of the injury. <coughs> letters to him when you were in the jail? Excuse me. I'm sorry, when he was in the jail and got arrested? Uh, yes. Okay. And do you remember talking to him about living with him in the Princeton house? Section relevancy, Your Honor. We approach. All right. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes. Uh, may I mark a three-page letter as defendant's Four page letter, I'm sorry, and or the next uh, exhibit. Three seventy. <laughs> I'm showing you a four-page, a copy of a four-page letter. Do you recognize your handwriting? Yes. Okay. And directing your attention to the second page, uh, would you read this paragraph? And tell me if it refreshes your recollection about the time you spent in the Houston House. <coughs> Does that letter make reference to uh, 
the time that you spent with Lyle at that period of time and refer specifically to the remembering when the heat had been turned off for several days? Yes. And the two of you still being able to enjoy the time? Well, I don't really understand the question. What do you mean by Well, does it say, do you remember the time at the Princeton house when all of the heat was turned off for several days? We almost froze, yet we made the best of it, and then you go on to talk about making the best of it. Right. Is that your handwriting? Yes. I believe you also testified on direct that you became engaged to La Menendez and first broke that engagement in 1989, the spring of 1989. Is that correct? Yes. And is that your testimony that the first time that the engagement was broken was in the spring of 1989? As I remember it, yes. And I have another letter, which is uh, two separate handwritten pages, a photograph and an envelope, which I'd like to show to the prosecution. 371. I'd like my bed is 371. All right. Did you want to pursue that objection or withdrawing it or what? Um, Ms. Lyons is going to say she's going to have All right. For the second part, the first part, I don't think there's any objection. Uh, Ms. Bizarre, the showing you the first part of 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 the and can you tell me when you wrote that letter? The, it is dated July 14th of 1988. Okay, and directing your attention to the paragraph at the bottom. Would you read that over? Yes. Okay. And is it still your testimony that the first time the engagement was broken was in 1989? Uh, yes, I don't see any. Does your letter say, so how is my ring? I hope you have it in a safe place, the safety deposit box. Yes. What ring were you referring to? My engagement ring. Are you feeling okay about our decision to postpone our engagement? Is that correct? Correct. I personally am feeling much better about us as a couple, and then you go on and talk about your relationship. Is that correct? Correct. Does that indicate that you gave the ring back? Well, I was traveling at the time in, in Europe, and I believe that was from another country. And I believe I gave that ring back to Lyle for safekeeping because I was traveling so much and did not want to travel with it. Um, and uh, What about the line that says, are you feeling OK about our decision to postpone our engagement? Yeah, objection is hearsay and not a Well, I all when I remember that statement right there that you were referring to, postponing our engagement, Lyle and I never did set a date, um, so I could have been referring to that. I don't know. Okay, so you gave him back the ring and wrote a letter about postponing the engagement, but you considered yourself still engaged. Objection, uh, is that you? Your Honor. It's argumentative. Rephrase the question. You gave back the ring to La Menendez, is that correct? Yes, I did. Okay. And you wrote a letter referring to postponing your engagement, is that correct? Correct. Is it your testimony that you considered yourself still engaged, even though you wrote about postponing the engagement? I believe I stated that I considered us engaged until the spring of 1989. 
And you remember the spring of 89 as when you and La Menendez split up, is that correct? That is what I remember, yes. And what does postponing our engagement mean to you? <clears throat> to me, it means that we postponed setting a date to get married. Had you ever set a date to get married? We had talked about it. Now, during the, well, I'll save the other part for later, in front of our jury alone. Now, you've testified that you went with La Menendez in the spring of 87 to get his hairpiece. Is that correct? Yes. And you had noticed before that that his hair was thinning. Is that correct? He brought it to my attention and okay. it was noticeable, yes. Okay. And it was something he was sensitive about. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. And you continued to accompany him to uh, a place to get a hairpiece in California, is that correct? I had been there uh, on several occasions. With okay, is that something that's referred to as the Hair Replacement Center, HRC? Yes, I believe so. And in fact, Detective Zoller asked you if you had accom accompanied Lyle to the Hair Reception Center out here in California, mm -hmm. is that correct? Yes. Okay. And do you know in what manner Lyle Menendez's hairpiece was attached in the um, spring and summer of 1989? Jackson Maca Foundation entered the summer. I'm sorry? Maca Foundation entered the summer. Overall. Um, I know that Lyle had several different type of mechanisms to attach his hair. His first one was different, I believe, than his second one, but... What was the first? As far as... How the hairpiece was attached. I believe it had clips. And it was what, clipped on, I believe. Okay, and what was the second? Um, I think there were... Could it, I don't know if it was snaps or something like that. I, I don't recall exactly. Did he wear it permanently or did he take <coughs> it off with you? Sometimes he took it off. And do you remember in the spring of 89 whether he took it off? No, I don't remember. May I approach, Your Honor? Mark, it's 372. All right, 372, what is it? It is a custom order form from HRC, the Hair Reception Center for Lava Nervous, whatever, dated February 4th, 1989. Is that hair reception or hair replacement? Replacement. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there showing you this document? Mm hmm Does it indicate attachment method on here? That's what it says. And are there four different options listed? Yes. And what are the options? Tape, clips, fusion, and other. And what is circled here? Fusion. Okay. You know, I'm going to strike her um, answer at this point as being here, say I thought there was going to be a follow-up All right, the objection sustained. The answer well, is struck. May I ask a follow-up question before? Well, why don't you um, get to the follow-up question so I have some idea as to what you're doing. Refresh your recollection as to the way that Lyle and Mrs. Hairpiece was attached during the spring of 89. Fusion really doesn't mean anything to me as far as how it was attached. Okay. That's what you're asking. Tape and clips are not indicated. Okay. And fusion is. Does not suggest to you that there was something other than tape and clips? Well, all I know is that when Lyle was in jail, um, I took, I did take tapes of some kind so that he could right. put so them on his hair. We're talking about before he was in jail. We're talking about 89. Okay. 
so you don't remember. Well, I guess it says fusion. No, so. distract us, uh, speculation. But you have the answer is true. But you have no memory. I does not did not seem important to me. I guess no. Fiona, that is all that I have in front of both juries. I have substantial additional material in front of the La Menendez jury only. Is there any examination by Eric Menendez uh, before both juries? Yes. All right. Are you ready to do it? Yes. Okay. You may. Mm -hmm. So, Ms. Pasarsic, when was this conversation that you've testified to with Eric Menendez? I stated yesterday. No, I didn't ask you what you stated yesterday. I'm asking you when was it. Excuse me, Honor. All right, let's not argue with the witness. If there's an objection, uh, you can state it to the court. Can you tell me when it was, not I, what you testified to? I cannot tell you exactly when it was. What year was it? I believe it was in 1989. So you don't know if it was in 1989? I do not know the exact date. Overall. What month was it? I do not know the exact date. What month was it? Ask an answer, Your Honor. It's a state. Do you know what month it was? Ask an answer. Not Overall. by me. You can answer the question. Thank you. Um, I do not recall the exact month. You don't recall any month, not just that month. Isn't that true? Objection argument. Overall. I remember the conversation I had with Eric Menendez. You told the police on November 2nd, 1993, that Eric didn't know from the beginning about Lyle's hairpiece, but he found out in the spring of 1989. Is that right? Is that what you told the police? Yes. You said you were there at the house in Beverly Hills when Eric had overheard their mother talking about the hairpiece. Is that what you told the police? That is incorrect. You didn't tell that to the police? I did not say that Eric overheard a conversation. You didn't say to Detective Zoller that Eric overheard their mother talking about the hairpiece? <coughs> no, I did not. Okay. So if it's here, it's wrong. Objection, argument, and calls for conclusion. Sustained. And this is the report, you, you understand, I'm reading from the same report that Ms. Lansing gave you yesterday to correct. Yes, I had several minutes to skim over it. I see. Yesterday. Now, how did you know that Eric didn't know about the hairpiece? Didn't know what about the hairpiece? Didn't, didn't know about it. That's what you told the police, that in the beginning he didn't know. How did you know that? Because during our conversation, he expressed at that time that up until that point he, you know, did not know. And then that's that so he was surprised. So you didn't know he didn't know until he told you he didn't know. Is that what you're saying? Could you restate that? You didn't know that Eric didn't know about it until he told you he didn't know. Is that what you're saying? Um I would imagine I assumed that he did not know. Did you can move to strike us. Way. Speculation. Sustain. The answer is true. Now, this hairpiece was obtained the first time in 1987. Yes. And you've testified it was obtained in the spring of 1987. It could have been. No, no. I didn't ask you if it could have been. Is I, that what you testified? I do not remember the exact date. <laughs> I'm trying my best to make to remember for you, and you're trying your best to make what? to remember the dates for you, and I'm sorry, it was a very long time ago. I didn't ask you to remember any dates. I asked you if you testified that Lyle Menendez first obtained a hairpiece in the spring of 1987. Objection, argumentative. Do you understand the question? The question has to do with what you said yesterday. Right. Also, what you just said today. What is your answer? I believe that is the time that he got it. I you know it could have been the summer, but I believed, as I remember, it to be the spring. Do you believe right now, Ms. Pasarsic, that I'm in possession of records that show it couldn't have been in the spring? Is that why you're backing off your answer? Objection, argumentative, Your Honor. Seems factual. Sustained. Well, when was it that he first obtained a hairpiece? I asked an answer. Overall. <laughs> <laughs> When was it, you're asking me? That's right. It 
I, I remember it to be in the spring. So it's the spring of 1987. That is what I remember. And what do you consider the spring? Well, if you look at a calendar, it would be April, um, you know, January, February, March would be winter, so April, May into June. Do you know what the first day of spring is? Yes. What is it? March 21st. And do you know what the first day of summer is? Yes. What is it? June 21st or 22nd. So March, the end of March through June is spring, is that correct? Pardon me? The end of March through most of June is springtime. Yes. And what precedes that is winter, is that correct? Mm-hmm. And what comes after it is summer, right? Yes. Now, <clears throat> from the time that the Menendez family moved into their home on Elm Drive, how many separate trips to California to see Lyle did you make? I do not know there are several. Well, more than 10? I do not know. Could it have been more than 10? It could have been. I was at the house frequently. Separate trips? I, d I do not remember exactly how many trips I made. Where were you living? What was your permanent residence, if you will, in October of 1988? Where did you live? I was in Birmingham, Alabama. That's where your sister lives? Correct. And were you living with your sister? Yes. We lived together for a period of time in Birmingham. And how long did you live with your sister in Birmingham, Alabama? From what dates to what dates? I do not recall. When did you stop living with your sister in Birmingham, Alabama? <sighs> this was a long time ago. My sister still lives there, so I don't know. You don't know? I lived there until December of that year. So. Until December of what year? 1988. Have a moment, Now, between October of 1988 and December of 1988, how many trips did you make to California? I don't remember. How many times did you see Eric Menendez during that period of time? I do not remember to be exact. Now, between December of 88 and February of 89, how many trips did you make to California? I don't remember. When was Ed Fenno, I'll strike that, was Ed Fenno living with the Menendez family when they moved into the house in Beverly Hills? I do know that Edward was out there. I don't rem remember exactly when Edward moved in. You say you remember Edward was out there. Out where? At the uh, Beverly Hills house because there were occasions when I did see him. There were times when you saw him there? Yes. Did you see him the last time you were there? I don't remember. Now tell me about this time where you claim to have had this conversation with Eric Menendez. When did you get to the house? On what day of the week? It was a long time ago. I do not remember the exact dates. Well, you, ha you don't even remember the month. Is that right? Is that right? I am, I have told you, I do not remember the exact dates of when. I, I visited the Menendez's many times. It was very We're long only ago. talking about this one time, Ms. Pisarsik, and is it your testimony now that you don't remember the month that you were there? It is my testimony that I, you know, don't remember the exact date. I'm not asking you for the exact date. You know the difference between an exact date such as November 23rd, 1993, and the month such as November? Yes. Judge, you okay. to move to strike. Do you remember the month? I remember approximately the time I was out there. Okay, let's try that. What's your approximate time now? Well, as I, when I stated yesterday, it could have been in the spring. It could have been, a, I don't know, January, February, March, April. May, June, July, August. No, it was not that late. <laughs> so it could have been anywhere from January through April. Is that what you're saying? 
it could have been. Yes. Well, haven't we already demonstrated that it couldn't have been March or April, this yeah. spring? Yes, we yeah. have. Sustain the answer, stricken. Are you satisfied that it couldn't have been the spring now? Same objection, Your Honor. Overall. I don't know. So tell me what you were doing on the day that you say you had this conversation with Eric Menendez. What were you doing? I was talking to Eric. Oh, before, the whole day? <laughs> no, I don't remember. Did you wake up talking to Eric? No, I did, did not. Did you go to sleep talking to Eric? There's an argument about Overruled. No. Then what'd you do the rest of the day? I don't recall. It was a long time ago. Okay, you don't have to tell us it was a long time ago each time. We can count. Why don't you just tell me? We'll just write counsel's comments. All right, the answer or the remark is stricken. Just ask another question, please. Why don't you tell me what you did at other times on that same day? I don't remember. What were you doing in Eric's room that day? I was not in Eric's room. Where were you? I was in the doorway. And what were you doing in the doorway to I Eric's room? I stopped by to say hi. I was in the house and stopped by to say hi. To Why Eric. were you in the house? I was visiting. Well, when you visited, did you always stay inside the house? Well, I had to sleep somewhere. You didn't sleep inside the house. You slept in the guest house. Isn't that true? True. You slept in the guest house with Lyle. Correct. So you weren't in the house because you were sleeping. Is that correct? Well, I was invited into the Menendez home. Did to someone invite time. you into the house just before you had this conversation with Eric? I don't understand the question. We're talking about at that time that you claim you do remember when you're standing in the doorway of Eric's room. Correct. My question is, what are you doing inside the house at that point? Why are you inside the main house? Well, because we did a lot of things in the main house. We ate in the main house. So were you we eating ate. at that time on the second floor in front of Eric's bedroom? No. So what were you doing inside the house? What had you just done before you were in the doorway of Eric's bedroom? I don't remember. And what did you do after this conversation with Eric? Um, I don't remember. What didn't I did. you run to Lyle and say, how astonishing, your brother didn't know you had a hairpiece, and now he knows, because I told him. No, I did not tell. What do you mean? You I didn't did. tell Lyle. Gee, I've just told your brother that you have a hairpiece, and boy, was he surprised. I didn't tell Eric that Eric had made that discovery previous, oh, and that was... didn't tell Eric. I didn't. Eric told me that he had known that it was that he w we were talking about it and he's like his conversation proceeded that I can't believe Lyle has the hairpiece I did not bring that up to Eric I did not I was not the one that told Eric so out of the blue with nothing preceding it as you stop by his bedroom Eric says to you gee Jamie I can't believe Lyle has a hairpiece just out of the blue is that your testimony I don't know if it was out of the blue. Well, what preceded it? I don't remember. So, with no recollection of what preceded it, mm -hmm. and yours, you didn't bring it up, is that your testimony? Yes, I did not bring that up. So, out of the blue on this day, Eric brings it up. Is that your testimony? Well, Eric was surprised. You know, he, he's, as I said, he was surprised that his brother had had a hairpiece. Well, how do you know he was surprised? He told me he was surprised. So, what did he say to you? Um, I have said... No, I didn't ask you what you've previously said. I'm asking you now. We have your testimony from yesterday. Right. What are you now saying? I'm saying... Tell, me, I... tell me everything you can remember about this conversation. Okay? Yes. Go ahead. What did you say? What did he say? <clears throat> what sticks in my mind? What, do you not remember Very... what he said? Excuse me, I'm ready. Let us answer the question. Please. Yes, why don't you answer the question? Thank you. What sticks in my mind is the surprise on Eric's face when he said, I can't believe that all this time Lyle's had a pair piece because but that is probably why his hair has always looked so perfect all this time. That so, is what I remember. So you, you, without you saying anything to him, Eric simply says to you in great surprise, I can't believe, with nothing preceding it. Is that what you're saying? Your Honor, objection, answer, answer, and argument. Sustained. There's no, no one else has had a conversation with him that you have heard or you have seen or that you know about. Is that correct? I don't know. But you don't know about any other conversation preceding the one that you're talking about. Is that your testimony? Well, Overall. 
from that conversation, it was obviously... Well, I'm not asking for your speculation. I'm okay. asking, do you know of any conversation that preceded the one that you're talking about? Not that I remember. Do you know, do you know who Noel Nedley is? Noel Nedley? Yes. Yes. And who is he? I believe he is a friend of Eric's. He was Eric's roommate at the Marina City Club, correct? correct? And at that time, you were Lyle's roommate at the Marina City Club. Yes. And you lived next door to each other. Correct. Do you remember conversations with Noel Nedley where Noel Nedley said, I never could understand why Lyle's hair was always so perfect, nothing ever looked out of place? No. If I were to tell you, Ms. Pasarsic, that this conversation you are attributing to Eric Menendez was actually something said by Noel Nedley, would you deny that? Excuse me, Your Honor. Seems facts not in evidence argumentative. Sustained. Isn't it true that Noel Nedley made this remark that you are now attributing to Eric Menendez? No. And isn't it true that Noel Nedley made this remark after you were all living at the Marina City Club long after the homicide? No. Now, what happened after this conversation you say you had with Eric? What did you do? I don't remember what I did. What time of day was it? It was sometime during the day. I don't remember the exact time. What time of day? I remember it, it being daylight. And uh, what did, you don't remember what you did after? No. Who else was in the house? No. What you were wearing? A long time ago. No, I don't remember. What you did that night? No. Or ever mentioning this conversation to anybody until you told it to Detective Zoller on November 2nd, 1993. Is that well, correct? It was a private thing for Lyle. It was none of my business to continue talking about it. So you never mentioned it to anybody until you told Detective Zoller on November 2nd, 1993? When right? I was asked about it, yes. And he asked you, do you have any reason to believe that Eric Menendez may have known about his brother's hairpiece? Is that what he asked you? Objection. Uh, calls for hearsay and irrelevant what was asked. Overall. I don't remember exactly what was asked, but that could have been the question. Well, he was asking specifically if you could help him out with any information about Eric knowing about his brother's hairpiece. Objection. The form of the question was argumentative. Overall. Isn't that true? Well, I answered a question. I'm that not I was asking asked. you if you answered it. I'm asking if you remember the question. Um, I remember there being a question oh. about Lyle's hairpiece and if Eric knew about it. Okay. Now, did you read in the paper about Eric's testimony in this trial that although he knew something had been done with Lyle's hair, he didn't specifically know that he had a detachable toupee? There's an argument of your own. Overall. No, I don't recall reading that. Did anyone tell you that that was his testimony? No. Were you told that Eric had testified that he knew nothing about any false hair with Lyle? No, I was not. Now, is it your testimony that the only event that you recall occurring during this trip where you claim this conversation occurred was that you went to the theater? That is something that I do remember from that trip, yes. You remember that from that particular trip? I do not know if it was that particular trip. I do remember <coughs> seeing a play when I was with Lyle on one of my trips. Okay, so now it's no longer tied to this same trip, seeing the play. It could have. Sustained to the form of the question. Answer stricken. Is the seeing of the play an event that you are sure occurred during the same <coughs> trip as the conversation you claim you had with Eric? It could have been. I didn't ask if it could have been. You would admit anything could be, would you not? <coughs> Anything's yeah. possible. All right, let's Our just ask uh, another question. Yesterday you testified that during the same trip you went to the theater. Now, would you like to amend that testimony? It, I could, Lyle and I could have seen it during that trip. Yes, that is but true. But you could have seen it during a different trip, right? 
If I was out here during, you know, a different time when that play was running, yeah, maybe. But Well, when was the play running? Well, obviously when I was out here. <laughs> and when you weren't out here as well, correct? Correct. It's an argumentative microfoundation. Overall. How many times were you out here? In 1988-1989? Many times. So during which time did you see the play? I believe it was around that time. When was that time? Um, the time of what? What are you asking? Well, you said you believe it was that time. What did you mean by that time? When I was out here. Ms. Pesorsic, you said you were out here more than one time. Correct. Is that right? Yes. You're sure about that, are you not? Yes, I am. Okay. And are you certain that during one of these trips out here, you went to this play? Correct. You're sure of that? Yes, I am. No doubt in your mind? Yes. Okay. Do you know what month it was when you went to the play? Not exactly. I do not. When you say not exactly, do you have some idea? Or do you have no idea when? I have an approximate time. I mean, it could have been uh, Christmas time. It could have been January, you know, whenever I was out here. Were you out here Christmas time? I believe I was out here around Christmas time. Were you out here around Thanksgiving time or right after Thanksgiving? I could have been. No, I'm not asking what could have been. I don't I'm asking know. what you remember. I do not know to be exact. You don't remember whether or not you were out here close to Thanksgiving 1988. Is that your testimony? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact dates when I was and was not here. Well, that's what I'm trying to help you with. Let's focus on the big holidays, okay? Yeah, Do you believe? Comments, Overall. Do you believe you were out here at or near Thanksgiving of the year 1988? Um, I don't remember exactly. You don't remember, is that your answer? I don't remember exactly when I was out here. <laughs> well, let's, that's, we're going to stick with the holidays for the moment. Do you okay. believe you were out here in California at or near Christmas of 1988? Yes, I believe I was. You believe you were? So you do remember that? I remember Correct. it being uh, around a holiday, yeah. So it could have been Christmas, New Year's. Okay, you don't have any trouble with that, correct? Trouble? You remember that you were out here around Christmas and New Year's. Objection, Ms. Tate's testimony. Sustained. Rephrase the question. Do you remember that you were out here be around Christmas to New Year's of 1988? Objection, Ms. Tate's testimony. Overall. Um, I remember being out here in California at approximately, you know, around that time. Okay. Now, do you remember being out here around any other time? Um. Vegas to here. Overall. You understand the question? Yes. I mean, I was out in California many times. We're talking just about this particular year in this particular time period. You understand that, Ms. Pisarto? Yes. Okay, so that's all we're talking about. Well, you just said any other time. Any other times besides Christmas, New Year's. Uh, I do remember visiting here several times. Do you remember visiting here in the spring? <sighs> I don't remember the exact dates of when I was here. So but you don't, yes, you I, don't have, I did come out to California many times. Now, you were on that. the professional tennis tour at one time, were you not? Yes, I was. And as a professional tennis player, wasn't it real important to make sure you were in the right place at the right time or you're going to miss your tour, you're going to miss your tournament? Oh, yeah, very important. And wasn't it, weren't you a person who for years had kept calendars and date books to keep track of your time? Yes. And didn't you testify yesterday, in fact, that during the period of 1988 through 1989, you were still playing in tournaments as part of the professional tour? Yes. So it was still very important for you to know where you are and where you're going, wasn't it? Correct. Usually when I was out here in California, it was a vacation.
time. Yes, and so you would block out vacation times uh, around the other things that you had to do, correct? Yeah. You'd write it down even. Maybe, I don't know. But when it comes to this conversation with Eric, the only thing you could remember is that it happened and nothing else about it. Is that your testimony? Objection argument, Your Honor. Do your testimony that you remember nothing about this conversation, not who was around, not what else you did, not when it occurred, but that it happened. I remember very distinctly that having the happened. conversation with him. But you don't remember the words, do you? That's Just the general impression. That's Isn't that what you mean? You know what, Your Honor, it would be nice if I could finish the question, and I'm sure counsel All will right, object. Why don't you do that then? Thank you very much. So your testimony that you just remember the gist of the conversation, you don't remember the exact words. Objection argumentative. Overall. I remember what Eric said. Do you remember the exact words or just the meaning that you took from them? No, I remember what Eric said. I remember okay. that conversation. I, I stated the words that he spoke to me. We'll say them again. Objection answer now. And your response was? I do not, I remember being surprised, you know, but I don't remember the exact words I sp spoke to Eric. Do you remember any of the words you spoke to Eric? Not specifically, I do not. The answer is no? Yes. I have nothing further on. Any redirect at this time? I have a moment, please, Your Honor. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Pizarsic, when you had this conversation with Eric Menendez, did you know that over four years later you were going to be cross-examined extensively about it? Objection, Your Honor, it's irrelevant. Oh, no, I did not. Um, at the time you had the conversation with Eric Menendez, was there anything about it that made you think you should go run and write it down for later reference? Objection, Your Honor, this is leading and argumentative. Oh, no, I did not. At the time that you had this conversation with Eric Menendez, did you know that your boyfriend was going to end up in a murder trial involving his parents? No, I certainly did not. Now, at the time that you were asked by Detective Zoller about this conversation, did you have your Casa Lupita work records available to you to reconstruct where you had been in that particular uh, time, the spring of 1989? No. Now, yesterday, Ms. Lansing and I came to you, and Ms. Lansing asked you to make some corrections to that particular police report. Is that correct? Yes, it is. All right, do you remember? All right, objection to stay in okay. the answers. Do you remember yesterday being asked to correct the police report, which reflects the conversation with Eric Menendez and other matters in the presence of myself and Ms. Lansing? Your Honor, I've been objecting, and I believe it. Asked to review it. Okay, well, again, the question's being asked. She could say yes or no, and it did, didn't happen that way. Okay, were you asked to review the police report in, in my presence in Ms. Lansing's yesterday out in the hallway? Yes, I was. And did you make some corrections to that particular report? Yes, I did. At the time that you were asked to make the corrections, did Ms. Lansing provide you with your Casa Lupita work records? No, she did not. Okay. Now, I believe <clears throat> that. Um, You've indicated that you traveled to California several times. Uh, was that during the period of time that the Menendez family was living in Beverly Hills? Um, yes. I mean, there was times during it and, and after, but yes. Uh, now, or beef and before. Before and after. Now, the work during. records from Casa Lupita, which you were shown yesterday, seem to indicate long periods of time where you worked uh, every day without a break. Would that be fair to say? Yes. During this period of time, did Lyle Menendez ever have a job? I don't think so. And the whole time that you knew Lyle Menendez, did he ever have a job where he got paid to work? So I'm going to object. It's irrelevant. It's beyond the scope. Sustained. When you were working, were you working for fun or were you working for another reason? I was working because I had to work. Objection, Your Honor. Irrelevant. Move to strike. Overrule the answer. We'll stay. Um, I believe you've indicated that you are familiar with a man named Ed Fenno, is that correct? Yes. And do you have a specific recollection sitting here today of seeing Ed Fenno at the Beverly Hills house 
on at least one trip to California? Yes. Do you remember if you saw him on more than one trip to California? Yes, I believe it was more than once. Now this credit card that you used for the telephone calls about which you were asked yesterday, uh, did anyone ever call you up and tell you that you should stop using that particular phone credit card? No. Okay. Uh, now I believe the records indicated, the ones that you were looking at yesterday, that your sister also used that credit card. Is that your recollection of what the record said? Yes. Are you responsible financially for your sister? No. How old is your sister presently? Twenty-six. Okay. And, yeah, twenty-six. I believe there were some questions asked of you of your knowledge of the particular trial that we're having here. Have you ever watched courtroom TV, which gives coverage, live coverage of the courtroom? No, I have not. And when you've indicated you've seen it on television, would that be during news clips? Correct. Okay, so like the 5 o'clock news or the 11 o'clock news or something like that? Yes. Now, um, you were asked about um, your relationship with Mrs. Menendez. Do you remember that yesterday, being asked about that? Yes. Um, did you bring to court a card that Mrs. Menendez had sent you in 1987? Yes, I did. May this be marked as next in order, I don't know. 373. Thank you. Can I please? Yes. Can I show you um, a card? It's got a art print on the outside, and on the inside appears to be a salutation. Could you tell me if you recognize the contents of this card? Yes, I do. Is that a card sent to you by Kitty Menendez on the 18th? It's dated 18th of September of 1987. Yes, it is. And it indicates in the last paragraph, Lyle said he owes you this. Thank you for lending it to him. Do you know what that was? Um, it was money. Okay, so you had lent him some money? Yes. Do you know approximately how much money you had lent him? I, I believe it was seven, several hundred dollars. And when this card arrived, was there some kind of money in it? Yes. And do you remember if it was cash or a check or in what? I believe it was a check. Okay. Now, um, you uh, were asked yesterday about how Mrs. Menendez felt about you, and you indicated, I know how Mrs. Just felt about me. Um, when you say that, what are you basing your knowledge on? Well, just the relationship that I had with her. Hey, did you ever go out to lunch with Mrs. Menendez? Yes. W was that when you were with other family members or just the two of you? We went shopping and we went out to lunch several times together. And it was just the two just of you? Just the two of us, yes. Uh, was she nice to you? Very. And when you came to stay at the house in Beverly Hills, did Mrs. Menendez ever tell you that she wanted you to leave, or did she ever do anything to indicate to you that she didn't like you? No. Okay. Um, would it be a surprise to you to learn that Mrs. Menendez didn't like you? Yes. Okay. Did you think she did? I thought she did, yes. Okay. And how about uh, Mr. Menendez? How did he treat you? Fine. I mean, we had a you know, Mr. and Mrs. Menendez both came and watched me play in several tennis tournaments, and, you know, they were very supportive. Ms. Pizarczyk, I, I believe you were shown a card in which um, some money was returned to you by Mrs. Menendez, which you had loaned to Lyle Menendez. Is that right. correct? Yes. Um, and during the course of time that you were dating Lyle Menendez, did he have money to buy you things? <laughs> yes. Did he buy you a lot of things? Yes, he tried. What kinds of things did he buy you? Jewelry, you know, clothing. What kind of jewelry? He bought you an engagement ring, we yes, know that. Yes, yes. Um, did it have a diamond in it? Yes. Um, other rings, uh, bracelets, watches, you know, those type of things. Okay. Gifts. So these were things he was paying for for you during the time um, that you were dating him. Is that correct? Objection is that's not going to lack foundation. Overall. Um, he bought, you know, me gifts for, you know, occasions, birthdays, the normal. Did he give you presents just for no purpose sometimes? Um, yes, occasionally. What kinds of presents? Teddy bears. <laughs> um, Did know. he send you flowers? Yes. Regularly? No, not regularly. Often? Several times. Did he buy you some pet? Bought me a bird. Did he buy you 
um, an animal that you called sapphire? Yes. What was that? That was a bird. And did you comment to him in your letters to him about the fact that he was always giving you surprises, roses, and presents? Uh, yeah, he, like, he did. Did he buy you golf clubs? No. Pay for haircuts for you? No, I don't believe so. And he did this during the entire time you were dating him, is that correct? But he did what? He did this during the entire time you were dating him, that is, bought you presents and was generous with you, is that correct? Yes. And when he, there was a period of time when he went to Australia uh, to play tennis, is that correct? Correct. And he called you every day from Australia, is that correct? I don't remember that. Would it refresh your recollection to look at a letter that you wrote to him? It might, yes. Yeah, I have a letter dated February 17th, 1987. I'd like to mark that as next in order. Thank you. recognize this letter? Mm-hmm. And uh, is that a letter that you wrote to Lyle? Uh, yes. Let me show you. I, I'd also like to mark as 375, a letter dated 1987, February 10th. Let me have a moment to the presentation. Directing your attention first to 375, is that also a letter in your handwriting to Lyle? Uh, yes, it does look that and way. Is that February 10th, 1987? Correct. And does it indicate here, I wish you tons of luck in Australia? Yes. And so do you remember that this was a period of time when he was in Australia? It looks that way. Okay. And the next letter, February 17th, says, I just got off the phone with you, how I look forward to hearing your voice each night. Does that refresh your recollection as to whether he called you every day from Australia? Well, I do not remember that he did call me every day. I don't remember Does that. Does this letter indicate you look forward to talking to him every night? Direction call for nursing. Overall. Um, the way I understand this letter is, uh, yes, I do look forward to hearing his voice every night, but it does not state that he did call me every night. Okay, so you just wrote a letter saying you just got off the phone and you look forward to hearing from him every night, your voice each night, but that doesn't indicate that he called you each night. No, it does not. I believe that, um, sorry, did you, may I have one moment? You were asked um, something about the jobs that you were working, or the number of days you were working, is that correct? Yes. And I, I think Mrs. Bozanich asked you if Lyle ever had a job. Correct. Did he have a job? I remember uh, one time he delivered pizzas for a very short period of time, like a week or two. Okay. Is and, uh, pardon me? Uh, go ahead, I'm sorry, I thought you'd finish. And, um, and then he also worked for his father for a very brief period of time as well. That's and uh, those are the only jobs you remember? Yes. Do you ever remember a time when he had two jobs at the same time? No. You know, I'd like to mark as 376. <coughs> a card.
Yes, I do. And directing your attention to this paragraph toward the bottom. <coughs> Can you read that first sentence for me? Uh -huh. Can you read it out loud? I'm really proud of you for working so hard at two jobs. Um, Mrs. Bazanich asked you about the use of the phone credit card. Yes. And um, I believe you said two of your sisters were using that card. Is that correct? Yes, Lyle gave permission to m both my sisters. <coughs> okay. And the calls that we were talking about were in 1989, so that's four years ago. So you said one of your sisters is 26 now? Mm-hmm. What's her name? Molly. So Molly would have been 22 at the time? Yes. And your other sister's name is? Jill. And how old is she now? Jill is 28. So she would have been 24 at the time? Yes. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. And you also let a friend of yours named Kelly Kalankowitz use that phone card, didn't you? I do not remember. Do you remember Detective Zoller talking to you about a call made to Kelly Kalankowitz's home? on uh, the night that the Menendez parents died? No, I don't remember. Now, when you broke up with Lyle, or Lyle broke up, when the two of you split up, mm -hmm. you did not notify either of your sisters they weren't to use the card? Um, Lyle continued talking, <coughs> talking to my sisters and calling my sisters during that summer, so, you know, I don't know what was said in their conversations, but, uh, that was not a priority of mine. I talked to my sisters probably once a month because we live in different parts. My, my question, Ms. Bizarsig, uh -huh. is did you tell them not to use the card? No, I did not. Okay. And you continued to use the card? I don't know of those calls yesterday, which ones were mine. Well, the one to Richard Garrett, who, Rick, who was your roommate for a period of time. Correct. I think you indicated those might have been yours. Is that correct? They could have been. I mean, I lived with Rich Garrett, so I don't know why I would have called him. Maybe it was Lyle calling me at Rich's. You know, I don't know. And what about if it was during a time when you and Lyle were split up? Lyle and I were still friendly at that time. Lyle came and visited so me at Casa So is it your testimony Lupita. that you never used to that card? No, it is not. Did you I, use that card? Yes, I did. Okay. And did you use it in, during periods of time other than a week or two before the Menendez parents died? Yes, one okay. Lyle gave me permission to use it. All right. But once you had split up, you indicated to the police when they asked you about this card mm -hmm. that Mrs. Menendez had given you permission to use it for a week to two weeks before the Vermont tournament. Is that correct? Objection. Argument would be on the scope of the future. Is that correct? Yes, she did. Okay. So when Mrs. Menendez said, you can use this card to arrange this tennis tournament so you and my son can play in the same tournament mm -hmm. together, did you say to her, you don't need to give me authorization. Uh, Lyle gave me permission and everybody in my family a long time ago and, and we still have it. I don't remember that you know, being the conversation. I don't know really what you're asking. So you didn't say anything to her or you did or? I don't remember you know, her making a point of saying this is the only time you can use this card. I don't rem recall that. Did you assume that, what, <clears throat> you don't remember her saying this is the only time you can use this card? I just remember her saying, Jamie, go ahead and use the phone card. For what? To call me and to set up the plans for the tournament. 
Okay, and this was a week and or two. It was very casual in the way she said it. It was not brought up as a major point. And this was a week or two before the tournament, is that yes, right? Yes, And the tournament was August 20th, the same day that the Menendez parents died, is that correct? It the was, same weekend? Yes. So it's your testimony that she said, go ahead and use this card for this tournament, and you didn't say, that's okay, we've all been using it all along anyway. I don't need special permission. I don't remember saying that to her, no. <coughs> and who did you think was paying the bill on the phone card? Um, I, you asked me that yesterday, I don't know. Did you think Lyle was paying it personally? No, Lyle was very kind of flippant with the way he used that card, you know, I'm sure he gave it to other friends too. To strike that as My a question point. is, did you think that Lyle was paying the bill or someone else was? I don't know. And you never asked? Well, Lyle said, Jamie, here's a card for you to use when you call your family, when you know you call and make important phone calls. But you two had broken up, is that correct? Not when you had that conversation with me, no. No, but I mean, when you continued to use the card. Uh, we were still friendly, and we had seen each other that summer. Right, right. but you weren't dating. Okay, this area has been covered already. Let's go on to something else. Mrs. Bazanich asked you about your relationship with Mrs. Menendez, is yes. that correct? Yes. And you said that you thought you got along just fine, is that right? Yes. Was she nice to your face? Yes, she was. Do you know that she told Terry Baral to get a key to the condo that she and Jose Menendez were buying for Lyle? so that Terry Brault could search and make sure your clothing was not in there and to let her know immediately if you stayed there? No, I was not. Sustained the answer stricken. Did you know that she told a number of her friends and her therapist that she was very disapproving of the relationship with you? Objection calls for hearsay and also argumentative. Sustained. Your Honor, this is under state of mind. She's been asked what her state of mind was with regard to her yes, relationship with Yes, I understand with that, Ms. but Menendez. that doesn't uh, authorize that sort of questioning of the witness. Yeah. That doesn't open the door to that sort of questioning. So you be, it's your test. Is that correct? Yes. Would it change her opinion if she knew that? And it, that was based on the way she acted to your face. Is that correct? Yes. And the letter that is that Pam has says love kitty on it, so. Okay. And you had no knowledge about what she was saying behind your back? No. Is that correct? That is correct. You said that um, the Menendez parents came and watched you play tennis. Yes. In tournaments? Correct. How many times? Several times. Is that twice? Is that it, five times? Probably what? twice. I didn't play a, you know, uh, a lot of local tournaments in California where they could have just driven to, but they did come and see me play some tournaments. Um, when, when was that? Um, when I was out here visiting Lyle and then playing tournaments, Lyle and I played in a couple tournaments at the same time as well. Do you know the year? Um, not to be, ex you know, exact, one of, on one of my trips out here. Do you know the year? No, not off the top of my head, so I do not. You dated Lyle in 1986, mm -hmm. 1987, and 1989. Do you have any idea? You said that there were about two times this happened. Correct. You have no idea which year? Um, well, I dated in 86. I was working in Birmingham um, most of 87, so it could have been 88. Okay. Yeah. And do you know where these tournaments were? Um, in the surrounding areas within driving distance. And do you remember any occasion in which you were so nervous about having the Menendez family watch you that you claimed you were sick? and didn't play that day. Um, I do remember defaulting from a tournament where the Menendez was, was there because I was sick, yes. Mm -hmm. I have nothing further at this time. All right, anything else on behalf of Eric Menendez? No. Any redirect no. at this point? All right, how long will the uh, examination be before the Lyle Menendez jury? I'd say about 45 minutes, Your Honor. All right, then, um, what we'll do is um, 
have the um, Eric Menendez jury um, come back at, uh, let's make it an hour from now and see how we're doing. And um, uh, it's now 10.30, and uh, if you would come back at 11.30 and we'll see, perhaps uh, we'll have some more testimony this morning, perhaps not, but at least we'll have you here in case we, we can get to some more testimony before both juries. And we'll also take a morning break and the um, blue jury is excused until 11.30 and the gold jury, uh, please return uh, and we'll have you start up again at uh, 10.45 in 15 minutes. After the death of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Menendez, you saw La Menendez at the memorial service. I saw, saw him the night before. It was and the first time. You had dinner, he and your mother and you? Correct. And you spent the night with him that night, didn't yes. you? And what condition was he in that night? Um, at dinner, he was fine. Um, what about when you went back to the room? He did cry. All night? No, not all night. A lot? Yes, he did. Did he do something unusual with a watch he was wearing? I don't remember. Do you remember telling your mother that that night was the hardest night of your life because of having to take care of Lyle Menendez and how he felt? Um, I remember probably discussing with her that, yes, it was a difficult night. Do you remember telling her that he was wearing a gold watch which he took off and threw across the room? No, I don't remember. You don't remember telling her or that? I do not remember stating that, no. Do you remember if that happened or not? No, I don't. So are you saying it didn't happen or you just don't remember one way or the other? I'm saying I don't remember. It was an emotional night. I don't, don't remember. But you do remember talking to your mother about it the next morning? My mother was there in town, you know, throughout the whole memorial service. Right, but I mean, you remember talking to your mother the next morning about what that evening had been like. Is that correct? Um, I would assume that I mentioned some things to her about it, yeah. Okay. And do you remember writing a letter to Lyle Menendez when he was in jail talking about how hard the period after his parents' death had been. I wrote Lyle letters almost every day. Okay. Do you remember writing him a letter that talked about back in September you were going through some difficult times, so were you in October, November, December, and January. That's why I was there. Your Honor, I'd object to this as being beyond the scope and improper impeachment unless they want to take the witness on the run. All right, how much of this examination do you have? That's, that was it. I'm just going to ask her if she remembers that period of time being a difficult period of time. All right, objection overruled by me. Um, difficult in what way? I don't believe I understand what you mean well, by difficult. Would it assist you to look at the letter? Perhaps. Well, may I approach, Your Honor? Yes. I'd like to make this in order. 377. Yes. Your Honor, is this 377? 377. Thank you. <coughs> I'm showing you what's been marked as 377. Okay. Is that appear to be a copy of the letter you wrote April 20th, 1990? Yes. And in that letter, just starting at the line I'm pointing okay. to. Okay. Can you read that? Mm-hmm. Does that seem to indicate that Lyle was going through difficult times in September, October, November, December, and January, and you were there trying to help him mm -hmm. out? Yes. And you were with him that whole time, is that correct? Yes. Now, I believe you've testified that you were still his girlfriend in March of 90 when he was arrested. Um, well, when he was arrested, uh, Still his girlfriend. We did, there was a period of time when I moved out of the uh, Marina City Club 
which was, I believe, sometime in January. Okay. So you were part in January, uh, February. Right. And then when, when he got put back into jail, it was a time that brought us closer together, obviously. So your relationship resumed then on his arrest in March, is that correct? Well, no, we did see each other during that period of time. I just was not living with him at the Marina City Club at the time I had moved into my own apartment. And you had moved into your apartment because the two of you had broken up at that point in time? Um, it was very difficult uh, for me to handle the emotional things while I was going through, and uh, I just felt, you know, it was difficult for me, and it would probably be better if I moved out, yes. Okay. And when you went back together, you indicated that you moved into the Beverly Hills home. Is that correct? Yes. And that was at Lyle's suggestion? Yes. And I believe you testified that it was because it would be safer for you. Is that correct? That is what Lyle told me, yes. And where were you living before you moved into the Beverly Hills home? I had an apartment. What area? Um, in the uh, Westwood area. Okay. Now, I think you've testified that the reason you were told to move back into the house was because of the circumstances surrounding the parents' death. Is that correct? Uh, Lyle said that he felt it would be safer if I were in the Beverly Hills house. Safer in what way? Was there any discussion about that? Well, again, he had told me it was the mob, the mafia, that there was someone to fear. Now, how was it going to be safer to be in the house where the parents were killed than to be in an apartment somewhere else in the city? Well, Lyle's grandmother was, I believe, there at the time, and he just felt it was a more unified, safer uh, situation. She was going to protect you from the mafia? No, not necessarily. She's a woman in her 70s? <coughs> yes, correct. And I did not mean to say that it was Mrs. Menendez, Grandmother Menendez, that was protecting me. Lyle just felt it was a safer all-around situation. Did, did you say anything like, this is where your parents were killed. If there's anybody out there who's dangerous, the first place they're going to look is in this house. Objection argument at the house. Um, no. <coughs> now, when you lived in the apartment, you had to pay rent, I take it? Yes. And when you lived in the Menendez house, you did not? Correct. Is that correct? And at some point you moved out of the Beverly Hills house into the other home owned by the family, the Calabasas house. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And when did you move to the Calabasas house? Um, I believe it was around the time that uh, they were s trying to sell the Beverly Hills house. Um, again, I don't remember the exact uh, month or date, but Would it that was about summertime or fall. Um, it was. I was probably in, staying in the Beverly House for Beverly Hills Guest House for several months. Um, so yes, it could have been summer or fall. It was it a? It wasn't a long period of time and in either place. Someone helped you moved in to move into the Calabasas House. Is that correct? Um, I would imagine. I mean, I did not live there alone. Noel also lived there with me. Right. But do you remember telling the police that your current boyfriend, Jamie, helped you move into the house? No, he did not help me move into the house. He didn't help you move into the Calabasas house? No, it was out of the Calabasas house. Okay. And when was that? That would have been um, November, I believe, of that same year, yet he is my current boyfriend now. He was not my boyfriend then. He was your boss at the time, yes. is that correct? Yes. And when did you first get to know him? Objection, relevancy, Your Honor. You told us that at <coughs> one point in time, Lyle Menendez gave you back the engagement ring. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Now, this is the ring that you had been given earlier and had given back to him when the two of you split up in January? Correct. And when was it that you got the engagement ring? Um, shortly after he had gone back into jail. I don't, again, I don't remember the exact 
Okay, well, uh, if I tell you your mother was here the month of October. Right. Of 1990. Okay. She was present at the jail, wasn't she? Present when you got when? the ring back? I don't remember that. Do you remember being given the ring by Terry Barol? Yes, I do. And do you remember going down to the jail with your mother and someone named Tim Custer? Um, I know Mr. Custer had been at the jail s many times. Um, and do you remember, I don't remember a conversation that. with Lyle Menendez about you asking him what he'd gotten you for Sweetest Day, which no. was in October? No. Do you remember having Lyle Menendez get down on his knee and propose to you at your direction? No. So you have no memory of that at all? No. Lyle got down on his knee? In the jail? No. That did not occur. Were you engaged to him? At which time? At this time when you got the ring back. Lyle um, and I had, it was more of a token, I would say, at that time of, you know, how could we be engaged? He was in jail type of thing. So you weren't engaged? Well, there was, it was uh, an unsaid feeling that, uh, you know, when you wear an engagement ring, obviously you're engaged. But, so uh, is your testimony that you were engaged? Or that um, you weren't engaged? Well, my testimony is that it's kind of hard to be engaged when Lyle is incarcerated. But yes, I did. He asked me to again wear the ring for hope of a future together. Yes. Okay, so let me try one more time. Were you engaged? No, after, after. Just yes or no? Okay. And you're asking about now what time? <clears throat> We're talking about. Um, in the fall, when she got the engagement ring back. Do you understand the question? Uh, if you could restate it, please. Yes. You remember when you got the engagement ring back from Terry Baralt? Yes, I do remember Terry giving it to me. And you started wearing it? Mm-hmm. Yes? Yes. Were you engaged or not engaged? I would say that that would be, if I'm wearing an engagement ring, I would be engaged. And do you remember telling the district attorney and the police when you were interviewed by them, and the interview was taped November 30th, 1992, on page 25, starting at line 17. Question. Wait, 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 just one. Um, could, we, could we actually back up to put it in context, please? How far back up do you want to go? Um, line four. We're just talking about the engagement, so All right. All right. let me just start with that. Line 17, question. At the time that he did this, you were engaged to marry him. Is that right? Line 19, answer, no, that's incorrect. He had given me an engagement ring several years prior. Question, oh, before all this happened, answer yes, <coughs> question, okay. Answer, and when we broke up that time in April, I gave it back, and when he went to jail shortly after, he asked me if I would wear the ring again. That ring was made for me. There were no plans of marriage. Do you oh. remember telling him that? Oh, well, yeah, it was kind of hard to make plans when I was incarcerated. May I mark another exhibit? Number? Three, seven, eight. Seven, eight? Yeah. Thank you. Um, marking two pages. Letter dated May 8, 1990. You want to bring me a push, please? Yes. Yeah. Nice, that is your handwriting? Yes. Would you please read to us, starting at this paragraph, the second paragraph? Yes. You want me to read it yes. to myself? No. Oh, okay. No. Um, can't wait to see our wedding plans. I thought that the woman was supposed to make the plans. Actually, when the time comes, it will be fun doing it together. Like I told you tonight, you make me excitedly nervous when you talk of wedding plans. Keep going. Um, my only. My only wedding plans are that you are you are the groom. 
Um, so maybe I have other plans too, but it sounds good. Um, do you want to hear what my dream wedding includes? Let's see, a very formal evening wedding where everyone, including you, is in black except me. <laughs> Tales for the men, of course. I'd love to get married in the Princeton Chapel, but is it too far away from Tavern on the Green? Maybe not if everyone stays in New York City the night of the wedding. Shall I continue? Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Your next question, please. do you go on and talk about the number of people at the wedding, two to three hundred people? Uh, yes. And you talk about specific churches, St. Paul's. Right. And you talk about who you want to officiate. Mm hmm And you talk about wanting a boys' choir singing. Yep, those are all dreams of mine. And you talk about, well, you refer to a specific priest. Is that correct? Yes. And you talk about um, exactly what your dress should look like. Right. And that you want flowers that are both red and white. Yes, I think we have covered the area. Do right. you have a question about this? I just have one additional question. And did you also list specifically the people you wanted to be your attendants in this wedding? My friends. Okay. And this is a letter you wrote to Lyle in jail, May 8, 1990? Yes. When did you move into the Beverly Hills house? In reference to when La Menendez got arrested? Um, I would assume he was arrested in March, so I was, would assume it was shortly after that. A couple weeks? I don't remember. Could have been a month, could have been two months, I don't remember. Could have been a month or two months? It could have been, yes. I don't remember. Now, You've told us here that you have not followed this trial that closely. Is that correct? No, I make a point not to if I don't have to. <laughs> now, when you were interviewed by uh, Detective Zoller on November 2nd, 1993, which is just a few weeks ago, correct. is that correct? Um, you handed Detective Zoller an envelope. Is that correct? Correct. And his report talks about the circumstances under which you <coughs> got the letter that was in the envelope. Is that correct? Yes. I believe this is the end of the scope. All right. Did you want to approach and yes, discuss it? Yes, Okay. You may do that. Uh, Ms. Pesarczyk, remember when you talked to Detective Zoller uh, you gave him an envelope with some material in it. Right. Right? And do you remember telling him that during the trial, some information came out about Lyle Menendez indicating that he'd been told by his father that his father had sponsored you to send you off to Europe to split up the relationship? Do I, can, I'm sorry, can you restate that? Okay. As far as the first part of it, I didn't. All right. Do you remember that there was testimony to that effect? I don't remember that there was testimony that, to the fact, no. Did you tell Detective Zoller, um, and I'm reading from the report uh -huh. I asked you to look at yesterday and tell me if there were any errors in. Okay. Jamie said that after she heard during the trial that Mr. Menendez had paid for her sponsorship by using an anonymous name, she contacted Mr. Nall to ask him of the sponsorship for her play in Europe. Um, well, that is incorrect as far as the report. I, Lyle told me uh, that in 1990, when I believe the document is dated, I did not hear that in the trial. Lyle told me himself that Mr. Menendez had sponsored me and tried to send me off to Europe somewhere. Right, that's I, before he was arrested, yes, right? Yes, I did not believe him, so I took it upon myself to contact my sponsors just to prove that Lyle had lied to me again as far as uh, his father's, you know, involvement in that. Or that his father had lied to him. Uh, possibly, whatever. You know, I was just getting proof that his father had, did have nothing to do with the sponsorship. Okay. But my question of you is, 
the report that I asked you to look over yesterday is one mm -hmm. and a half pages long. Is that correct? <coughs> correct. And I asked you to go through it and tell me if there were things that were wrong in the report. Is that correct? Yes, there were a lot of details, yes. And in fact, you made some corrections. Is that correct? Yes. And the area that I'm referring to now, which says Jamie said that after she heard during the trial that Mr. Menendez had paid for her sponsorship by using an anonymous name, she contacted Mr. Nell to ask him of the sponsorship for her play in Europe. Well, that is, is that what it says? I don't know what it says that is incorrect as far as the time frame. Okay. So I did not call Mr. Nall after I had heard there was testimony. So when, I called Mr. Nall way before in 1990. When Detective Zoller wrote this down, it was wrong. I cannot see that in front of me right now, but if what you are saying is in that report, I did not contact Mr. Nall after I heard testimony okay. about that. I contacted Mr. Nall in 1990 when Lyle told me that Mr. Menendez had sponsored me, and it wasn't true sponsors, that it was Mr. Menendez behind it. Okay, so That's when I contacted Mr. Nall. My question of you is, mm -hmm. if Detective Zola wrote that down, it was a mistake. Yes, it sounds and like it, if that's what you're you reading. When you read it yesterday and I asked you to look for any mistakes, you didn't notice that it was a mistake then? I, I must not have, no. Okay. And you did, in fact, on your own, without the police even asking you for this information, volunteer information which you believed would show that Lyle Menendez was lying. No, the detectives asked me if I had any documents or letters, um, and I perceived that to be a pertinent document. That's all. Now, on, when did he ask you if you had any documents or letters? Um, I believe during one of those, you know, rep uh, sessions when I sat down with him. So if he indicates that you just on your own handed him this envelope, mm -hmm. um, which was a letter to you from Mr. <coughs> now, um, then that would be wrong in his report also. Is that correct? Well, I don't really understand what you're asking. My question is, if you volunteered this document because you thought it would help get Lyle Menendez convicted. No, I, was get, I gave that document because I don't know if it was during this session or a session before with the detectives. I had been asked if there were any documents. And at the time, I obviously didn't recollect, but I had found this document during the time. And okay, so, so at the time you gave it to, to Detective Zoller, you had no idea that it had any connection to any testimony in this trial. Is that I, your testimony? I, yes, I don't re recall. Now, you also, when you reviewed this report, one of the changes you made was there is a paragraph that talks about you getting books for Lyle in the jail. Is that correct? Uh, correct. I believe so. And you said that you sent him books in the jail several times a week. <coughs> Sometimes, yes. So you sent him a great number of books. Yes, many. And when you were interviewed by Detective Zoller on November 2nd, 1993, you said the only book that you could remember was a book on sign language. At that time, yeah. Is that correct? Um, I believe so, yes, and that, at that time. Yesterday afternoon, for the first time, you remembered that the one other book you got him was on the Billionaire Boys Club. Is that correct? Yes. And do you know that that has been an issue in this trial? No. So it just is something you just came up with? Well, I was asked if at the first time, November 2nd or 3rd, when I was questioned, if I remembered any titles, that's the first time that I had been asked to think about that. Okay. And, uh, and at that time, when I was asked the question, I did remember the sign language and book, and there have been, since then, other titles that I remembered. And obviously, that was one that stuck in my mind. Okay, and what other ones do you remember? Um, as far as? Other books you sent him. I sent him several sign language books. I sent him Mishner. I sent him numerous books. Um, Poland, I sent him uh, just, you know, there's many too many to recall. Um, some books that I recommended to him, some books that he requested. There was many books. Any of them about child abuse? If there were any ab about child abuse, uh, it did not state so in the title so that it would, you know, 
be reflective of what you know I was getting. Now, when Mrs. Bazanich and I asked you yesterday if there were any books about child abuse, mm -hmm. you said no. Not Is that, that I rem yes, not that I remember in the titles. And did you look at the books that you were buying? Well, some of the books that I bought that I thought he might enjoy, yeah, obviously. And then there were many that he requested titles of, you know, names of books, and so I purchased those books for him. And why did this? Why did the BBC book particularly stand out in your mind? It is just one of the titles that I remembered. Okay, so you remember that and Poland and a sign language book. Uh, at this time, yes. But no other titles? Uh, not that come to my mind at this time. And do you remember writing to him about books that you sent him? Uh, as I said, I've written Lyle very frequently, so I may have written. Your Honor, I just want to refresh your recollection. Do you want me to mark these collectively? We're not going to use them. I'd, like like them. Them. I'd like to mark them. Okay. Yes, these are letters written by Amy T. Lyle in jail. First one is April 10th, 1990. Sarsha, would you uh, look at the April 10th, 1990 and see if you listed the names of some books you sent him? Yes. And what are they? Um, there is a book, it says on the Civil War, it doesn't have a title. Robert Frost poems, quotes by Martin Luther King, and a surprise book in The Hobbit. Okay. And then on April 25th? Mm -hmm. Trinity. Poland. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> Something Not else. Poland. Yeah. Right, it's talking about, about the, Poland. Yes. About Poland. Like the book is Trinity. Right. And then you have a list of books on the May 1st, 1990. I sent you four books today. Mm -hmm. What are they? Uh, Profiles and Courage, an Abe Lincoln book, um, a book about flying, and a Plato book. And there's no reference to any book about the Billionaire Boys Club. Is that correct? No, not at that time. And these are books that you sent him, and you wrote about sending them, but none of these titles stuck with you. Is that correct? Well, there are many titles there, and there's many, many more books that I sent him, so. And did you um, attempt to get any records about the various bookstores that you went to or assist the police in finding the bookstores you went to to find your back orders? Um, I don't really understand that question. Oh, let me strike that. What bookstores did you buy books from? I bought bookstore books from books all over Southern California, sometimes in Pennsylvania. When I was in Pennsylvania, I had books shipped from there. Um, I gave you guys books sometimes. But when you were living room. out here, mm -hmm. you said you had books shipped from Pennsylvania. You lived out here the entire time he was in jail till you broke up with him, didn't you? Right. But, I mean, I visited in my family, Christmas, holidays, that type of thing. You testified that you also were asked to get cases from the law library. Yes. Okay. And were you given a list of citations? Um, the names of the cases? Yes. Okay. And how many names were you given? How many cases were you given? I don't remember. Several. Two? Three? Um, I don't recall how many. More than five, more than ten. Can you give us a range? Um, between three and ten, it could have been. I don't. Okay. You know, and did recall. you go by yourself or with somebody else to the law library? Um, I do remember being 
uh, by myself. Okay. And were these California cases? That I don't recall. Were they? Were there areas in the law library that had groups of books that seemed to be grouped by states or by federal or? I had never been in a law library before, so I had asked a clerk to, I handed over the names that Lyle had requested and asked a clerk if they could obtain, you know, those certain cases. Okay, so it's your testimony that you went into the law library and you gave the clerk who was working there this list of cases, like a shopping list. Well, I said I was looking for these. I don't know what I'm looking for, obviously. Okay. I don't and know where to find them. Can you please assist me? Where to find them, or did this clerk pull them for you? I don't recall. I believe they may have um, pulled them for me, but I don't recall exactly. Was it a man or a woman? I don't remember. Young or old? I don't remember. Black or white? I believe it was a white person. I believe it was a man, to tell you the truth. A but white man? I don't know for sure. Young or old? I don't remember. And you gave him this list of three to ten cases, and he went and got all the books for you, or made copies for you, or what? No, the individual that helped me, um, I made the actual copies of the books. So did this person tell you where to find the books, or bring you all the books? I believe it was, you know, I, again, as I stated, did not know where to find any of these, so I don't remember if he actually took me there, if he pulled the books. I don't remember the exact sequence. Did the books all to appear to be from one section in the library or from different sections? I don't remember. The library, did the library have one room or more than one room? It was one room. It's and a law library. As you walked in the door, were the books to your left or to your right? I believe they were to my left because I believe that their place where the clerk was sitting and the copy machine was to my right. Okay. And so did the clerk say, go over there against the wall, that's where the cases are, or the clerk went and got the books for you? Clerk, answer. Um, I don't remember. I remember going in there not really knowing where to find any of the cases that Lyle had asked me. So the first thing I did was ask for assistance. Okay, well, my question is, did you, f the books are thick, is that correct? And they have a number of cases in them? Correct. Did you go get the book yourself and find the case within the book? Or did the clerk bring you the book and then you found the case? I believe, and, and I don't remember 100%, I believe that the clerk could have gotten the books um, and possibly even showed me the case because again I didn't know what I was looking for. So this clerk got the got the books, found the case, opened them all up, and gave them to you. I can't say that that was what's 100% true. I'm assuming that that is what could have happened because I but don't you don't know. You're well, assuming it could have happened, but you don't know. I remember handing the cases, the requested cases, to a, the clerk and saying, "Listen, I don't know how to get these. Uh, can you assist me?" I do not remember what happened after that. Uh, How long were you in the law library? I don't remember, obviously, for a while. What's a while? Several hours, I would assume. It took a while to copy them. I do remember 50, 60 plus copies. Okay. For all of the cases? <coughs> um, yeah, at least. Okay. And do you remember the names of any of the cases? No, I do not. Now, you said that you read through some of the cases because you knew it w that they were about kids getting off who had killed their parents mm -hmm. who were claiming sexual abuse. Is that correct? I remember that I did not read, obviously, in detail because uh, they were lengthy, but I remember reading like an initial paragraph that gave a synopsis of what the case was about. Um, do you remember reading and that? And all of these cases were about kids who got off because they were sexually abused? That is um, what stands in my memory is reading a specific case that stated that, yes. Okay. And when you say got off, they were found not guilty. They were acquitted because correct. of this. Is that correct? Correct. And all of the cases were of that type, kids who were acquitted because they claimed sexual abuse. Um, when they were charged with killing their parents? Well, I remember reading several of them. I 
do not remember the context of every single case, but, but several of them, yes. All of them that you read had that same theme. Yes. They were charged with killing their parents, they claimed they were sexually abused, and they were acquitted. Is that correct? That's what I remember, yes. Okay. And were these cases in California, or were they in other states? I have no idea. I do not remember. Okay. Now, but you're very clear that they were kids who were acquitted. Well, it, yeah, that when, if you would read something like that, you, I'd say a red flag would go off in your head, and it did with me. I was like, whoa, <laughs> surprising. Okay. Uh, Ms. Pisarsik, you've never been to law school, is that correct? That is very correct. Are you aware that the cases that are published are cases that go up on appeal? That is, they're at a second level of review? No. Okay. Will you accept that if I tell you that at this point in time? Those cases that are published are cases that are tried and someone is reviewing that case on appeal? That's... I guess so. I mean, if you say that's the way it is, I guess it is. And are you aware that if someone is acquitted mm -hmm. or found not guilty, there is no appeal? I guess so. Mm -hmm. Are you aware that there are no published cases of children charged with killing their parents who claim sexual abuse and are acquitted. Did you know that? Well, maybe the ones Laura was asking me to look at were appealed cases. I don't know that. But you said that they were acquitted or found well, not guilty. That is what I remember. I don't can't say that there was not an appeal on those cases. But you remember specifically that they were found not guilty. That that was the context of the defense, yes. Okay. And so if I tell you that there are no published cases of children who are accused of killing their parents, mm -hmm. claim sexual abuse, and are found not guilty, do you still stand by your testimony? I stand yes or no? Uh, yes, I stand by my testimony. Thank you. When La Menendez was, well, let me, let me go back. After you got back together with La Menendez after the memorial service, mm -hmm. um, you started living with him at the Marina City Club. Is that correct? Yes. And when did you start living <coughs> with him? Um, I believe it was sometime in November, because after the memorial s services, I was uh, still playing tennis. I had been in Israel playing tennis. So you lived with him November, December, and January? Yes. And were you working at that time? Uh, I had started to work at the L.A. Tennis Club. When did you start working there? Um, shortly after um, I had moved. I don't know the exact date. Can you get close? Um, could December, January? I mean, I had been in town for a while, and as soon as I moved here, I started looking for a job, and it was shortly after that. So you got a job at the L.A. Tennis Club in December or January, is that correct? Uh, yes, I believe so. And before that, when you're living at the Marina City Club, who was paying the rent? Um, Lyle was. Okay. Let me stop you just for a moment, and we'll excuse the blue jury since there's some of them in the uh, jury room have come back at one three. And let's do that first before we continue. Sorry. I believe you indicated uh, Lyle was paying the rent. Oh, yeah, it was his apartment. And uh, who was paying your other expenses? Um, I was. Okay. And were you working for him? Um, Lyle had asked me to do quite a few errands and um, to help him. He had never balanced a checkbook to do those type of things to really help him get back on track after his parents' death. And yes, I helped him. So you were helping him manage his money? Trying to. And it was something he wasn't very good at, no. is that correct? <laughs> and were you being paid for that? Um, Lyle did help me out. Um, you know, we were living together. And yes, he did help me as far as financially until I got a job. Okay. <coughs> Were you getting a regular paycheck? Um, or was he just paying your expenses? 
I just remember him, you know, when I needed uh, some money, uh, he would he would help me out. I don't recall it being a paycheck that <laughs> taxes were filed on. <laughs> okay. So when you say you needed, if you needed some money, helped you out. Are we talking about twenty dollars or fifty dollars or a hundred dollars? Um, I don't recall. I mean, it was, uh, you know, I had expenses, uh, and Lyle was generous and helped me out with them. I mean, he bought you a car, didn't he? A Christmas present, yes. What was it? It was a used car, a um, used Saab. Okay. And it cost about eleven thousand dollars, didn't it? I don't know. Was it bought from Toyota at Marina del Rey? Um, I don't know. He drove up with it with a red ribbon around it. You say it was a used car. Yes. So I mean, it wasn't a very nice car. No, it was a nice car. And it was used. How long did you keep the car? Um, I had it until it developed developed some engine problems. How long um, did you keep the car? I believe about six months. It could did have been longer. Did you sell the car then? Uh, yes, I did. You traded it in? Yes. And you got what? I got a Miata. And how much did you get for the used car when you traded it in? Objection or all? Um, I don't remember uh, what the trade-in value of it was. Yeah, I have two additional exhibits I'd like to mark. 380. And 381. Right. And then uh, 380 appears to be Xerox copies of four checks. And I'd like to show you one. The bottom of the page, dated December 21st, 1989. Mm -hmm. Made out to Toyota Marina Del Rey. Correct. For eleven thousand one hundred ninety-nine dollars. Yes. Would that be about the time that he bought you the car. Um, well, it was a Christmas present, so yes. Showing you what we've marked as three eighty-one, which appear to be two original checks. Do you recognize the handwriting on those checks? Um. Yes. Whose handwriting is it? Well, that's Lyle's. And signature. Signature, and where it says paycheck is last. Yes. Okay. And who it's made out to. The it's amount and the dates are all your handwriting, is that correct? Yes. And is one of them dated December 10th, 1989? Correct. And how much is that for? $700. And is one of them dated December 19th, 1989? Yes. And how much is that one for? $750. And the notation at the bottom, which you said is Lyle's handwriting, says paycheck? Yes, that one does. Were you also involved even after Lyle was arrested? <laughs> in helping him <coughs> run his business affairs? Um, I would not call it helping him run his business affairs. I cared about Lyle very much, and he obviously needed some help. But I was there to support him. Did you give him business advice? I, if you call balancing a checkbook business advice, but you never gave him any other advice about what he should buy or sell or who he should hire or how much he should pay them or anything like that. Objection irrelevant. Overall. Um, if I did, I do not recall. So that wasn't really your role? You really weren't involved in running the business? What business are you talking about? He owned a restaurant when he was arrested, didn't he? Yes. That's the business I'm talking about. Were you involved in running the restaurant at all? Not in running it. I, you know, I don't... Not in the day-to-day -day activities as far as running, no. How about, how about advising him on decisions connected to it? Well, I didn't think it was a good idea for him to purchase a restaurant, <laughs> if no, that's what you mean. I'm talking about after he's arrested, mm -hmm. if you remember being involved in helping him make business decisions. Um, if you, I, I don't know, if Lyle asked my advice, I'm sure I gave him my opinions and my advice. So you gave him opinions about who to hire, I don't recall. How much to pay them? If Lyle asked me what uh, the normal rate of an em what he thought I should he should pay in an employee, I'm sure I probably gave him an opinion. Yeah. I was in the workforce at the time, okay. and Lyle was not. But you did, you really didn't care that much. It's just if he asked, you gave him an opinion. Is that correct? That's what I remember right now. 
Shkenemi, I approach with three uh, 382. And what is this? A letter written by Ms. Pasarsik to Lyle Menendez the while date. he's in jail. The date? Uh, it's undated. It's clear that he's in jail. She may be able to date it from the uh, All right. sequence of events. Okay. <coughs> Do you know someone named Eric Tam? Yes. And is Eric Tam a friend of Lama Uh Yes, and I believe he was involved with the restaurant as well. Airport Yes. Showing you what we've marked as 382, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do you recognize the handwriting? Yes. Is that your handwriting? Yes, it is. Okay. Do you remember the card? Yeah. Okay. I'd ask you to start with the word hope and read it out loud. Okay. <coughs> hope you're having a good day. Last time we spoke, we kind of fought or discussed, I guess, our different opinions on Eric's salary. Um, I'm still adamant about you paying him no more than $22,000 with bonuses if he produces. Do you realize that the restaurant has to come up with $100,000 by January or you have to sell it? Keep going. Um, I do, I know you may not care, but I do very much, so I won't let you give him more than that. I don't care if you say it's none of my business, it is, I thought we were a team. Keep going. Um, please take my advice. Try it. Uh, maybe you can give him a percentage, or I'm not sure what that is. It's a notation or something. But be a real businessman, um, Menendez, not someone that gets taken advantage of. Um, and don't argue that he's your friend. If he is, then he'd be glad to work for you for peanuts and prove himself. Keep going. Find out what real friends are, Lyle. Maybe you shouldn't even hire him if you can't dist distinguish between an employee and a friend. Um, I'm serious about this. Um, I won't let you go throwing away, throwing money away again. Sure, maybe it's not my money to worry about, um, but you, but I don't care. You are mine, and I'm sick of having people friends or not, take advantage of you. Okay. You've indicated that at some point while Al Menendez was in jail, uh, he gave you back the engagement ring. Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Do you still have it? No, I do not. What did you do with it? I tried on two separate occasions to give it back to Lyle. Um, and what did you do with it? Where is it now? I. I don't have it, <laughs> um, but I did try to give it back to him on two separate occasions. I realize you're volunteering this information because you think that this is going to be hurtful to Lau, but my question... Excuse me, Your Honor, can counsel comment be stricken, please? Yes, uh, my, the uh, remark is stricken. Why don't you just ask the question again? My question is, where is the ring now? I do not know. I do not have that ring now. What did you do with the ring? Several of the stones fell out and were lost. The um, diamonds? Yes. And, uh, and then I... Uh, sold the remaining remaining stone. What'd you do with the money? Uh, I'm sure I put it in my bank. <laughs> At some point, you were told by Lyle Menendez he had killed his parents. Is that correct? Yes. And at some point, you got a new boyfriend. Is that correct? Yes. When did you get the new boyfriend? Overall. Um, in December of night, I was told the truth in December of 1989. Am I correct in saying that? <laughs> um, when he was in jail. When he was in jail. It would have been December of 90. No, December of 1990, um, and it was after Lyle had told me the truth. Um, it was after that. Up to that time, you believed that he had not killed his parents. Is that correct? Yes. 
And that was in spite of the fact that you'd been sent to the law library to research these cases you've told us about? Well, that's when I started. That was one of the things that had started I me mean, questioning Lyle's innocence. But once you knew that he was charged with this and had, in fact, killed his parents, you got a new boyfriend. Is that right? Yes uh, or no? Your Honor, object as irrelevant. Oh, Yes or no? After I found yes out. Yes or no? Excuse me, argument. Could you restate the question? question? Afterwards, did you get a new boyfriend? After I found out the truth, yes. Thank you. I have nothing further. Redirect. All right. Um, Your Honor, I have her next bit, but I'd like to mark it as a question. the next in order, please. 383. <laughs> Thank you. It's a five page document. It's a letter from NAL Development. Can I approach, please? Yes. Ms. Pizarro, if I'm showing you a letter, I'd like to ask you if you recognize it, specifically the first page. Yes, I do. I believe there were questions by uh, Ms. Lansing about whether um, you had provided Detective Zoller with some documentation. Is this the documentation that you provided to Detective Zoller in November of uh, this year? Yes. And this particular letter is dated February the 26th of 1990. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, was that the only contact you had with Null Development in order to try to straighten out who, in fact, had sponsored your trip to Europe? Uh, well, I had contacted Wally for that specific purpose. You contacted who? I'm sorry, Wally Null. Jay Wally Null is his name. All right. I'm objecting to strike as non-responsive. The question is, was this the only Objection answer? sustained. The answer is stricken. After you got this letter from Wally Null, uh, did you get any other letters from Mr. Null on the subject matter of who had sponsored you? No, that was the letter. Okay, so it wasn't that you uh, contacted him in 1993, it was that you contacted him in 1990? Yes. And from the letter, was it your understanding that Mr. Mananas had not been a secret sponsor of yours for the trip to Europe? Yes. During the time that Lyle Menendez was in custody, did your mother loan him $10,000? Yes. And what does your mother do for a living? She is a clerk at a department store. Does she have any other source of income? Yeah, I'm going to object and ask a coach. All right. Okay. okay. Ms. Pizarsic, um, your mother is a clerk in a department store, is that correct? Yes. And this money was just a loan, correct? Correct. All right. Now, I believe that shortly after you reunited, well, let me back up. When you saw Lyle Menendez in Princeton, um, you were questioned by Ms. Lansing about the fact that there were some difficult times after that because of his parents' deaths, correct? Right. Correct. Was it during this period of time that Lyle Menendez was also telling you that the mob had killed his parents? Yes. Um, the Beverly Hills house, at the time that you moved into it, did it still have a gate across the front of it? Yes. Were there any other kind of security precautions at the Beverly Hills house that your apartment didn't have? Well, yes, very much so. It was much more of a closed, confined area where my apartment was an open walk-up. No, it was just the door. <laughs> Were there any, um, was there a security system at the house in Beverly Hills when you were living there, to your knowledge? I believe there was, yes. Are you aware of the fact that Lyle Menendez's jail cell was searched in June of 1990? Um, I don't, you mean at that time? I, I remember Lyle at one time telling me that uh, his jail cell had been uh, searched. And did you continue to send him letters and books after the time that you became aware that his jail cell had been searched? Uh, I would imagine so, yes. So, it was June of 1990. Well, I, uh, without specifying the time, after you learned that from Lyle Menendez that his cell had been searched, did you continue to write him letters and send things? Yes. Okay. Now, do you have any training in legal research? No. Do you have? Do you, have you ever taken a course in college, like business law or any kind of law courses? No. And when you went into the law library in Santa Monica, was that the first time that you had ever um, been in a law library? Yes. Okay. Do you know what the lesser included offenses to murder are? No. Do you know anything about um, criminal procedure? No. Do you know what I mean when I say criminal procedure? No. Okay. Do you know what manslaughter is? Can you define manslaughter? Yes, I think. All right. I, mean, do I would you, assume. 
it would be killing someone. <laughs> All right. Do you know what the difference between voluntary and involuntary manslaughter is? Um, I'm an objective to Assistant. Okay. Uh, Ms. Pizarsic, when you went into that law library, would it be fair to say that you didn't have much knowledge of criminal law? Yes, that's very correct. And my last question for you is, did you want to testify for the prosecution in this case? No. Thank you. Ray Cross. Um, Ms. Pasarczyk, you met, how many times have you met with the prosecution? Um, two times, formally, and then the one time that um, they first came to my door. And has the defense written letters to you and asked to interview you? Uh, you did write one letter, I believe. Okay. And did you write me back saying you refused? I just said that I did not wish to have any, um, you know, anything to do with the case. Okay. And have you refused to talk to the defense ever since? Uh, I refused to talk to anyone until I was subpoenaed. But you did meet with the prosecution, with Detective Zoller, Mrs. Bazanish, and Mr. Kuriyama, is that correct? Upon subpoena, correct. Well, you weren't subpoenaed when they came to your house and talked to you, were, they, were you? Well, I opened the door and they were there. Okay, but it wasn't a subpoena. No, that was not. Um, with regard to Mr. Now, uh, did you have any other contact with him besides this uh, letter of February 1990 on this issue? Uh, well, I called him stating, um, you know, asking him, Wally, that was his name, Wally, Mr. Nall, uh, it has been told to me that Lyle Menendez's father paid for my sponsorship, and I'm very confused at this. I'm aware of all of the sponsors that were involved. Uh, so, yes, I did call him. Um, with my concern, and he said that he would, that no, Mr. Menendez was not involved, and okay. that he would Can provide you stop a letter. A second. Mm -hmm. This was because Lyle had told you before he was arrested, even, that his father had told him he had done that. Is that correct? No, Lyle was in jail when he told mm -hmm. me that. <coughs> so, Lyle was in jail when he told you that his father had done the sponsorship. Is that correct? Um, I'm, I'm not sure the exact... Well, was he in jail or not? I mean, w when you found out about that, when Lyle told you... Sorry. When Lyle told you that his father had told him mm -hmm. that his father had sponsored you, was Lyle Menendez in jail or not? Um, I do remember having the discu a discussion with him when he was in jail. And is that when you contacted Mr. Now? I don't know. I mean, Had you that... contacted Mr. Now before that? Um, I contacted Mr. Now when Lyle told me that. Okay. Now my question was, was he in jail or not in jail when he told you and you contacted Mr. Now? Um, well, I believe the letter was of February 26, 1990. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Yes. Um, so Lyle was in jail, what, in March? Well, I'm or, asking if you I, have I any memory of when this conversation I, took place. Do you remember? I remember talking to Mr. Nall, yes. I'm asking you about the conversation oh. with Lyle Menendez. Um, I'm sorry. I remember talking to Lyle about it in, when he was in jail, yes. And after that, you contacted Mr. Now. Um, I would assume that it would have been, yeah, when Lyle told me, so of course. Okay, so you contacted Mr. Now when Lyle told you, and Lyle right. told you after he'd been arrested. Is that I, correct? I believe so, yes. That's your testimony. I think that is, yes. I mean, I remember Lyle talking to us, discussing that when Lyle was in jail. I am not sure if that conversation came up prior to him being in jail, though. If but that's which, what you're asking. If it came up prior to it, when would it have been that you contacted Mr. Now? After the jail conversation? Well, after the first time that Lyle mentioned it to me. And you have no idea whether that was in jail or not when he first mentioned it to you? Um, from what I can remember, it was when he was in jail. Okay. You know, that's, I remember that conversation. Okay. So that's your memory now, is that 
he told you for the first time after he was in jail and you contacted Mr. Now and got the letter. Is that correct? Um, if, if I remember correctly, yes. Okay. Now, the letter is dated February 26, right. 1990. Is that correct? Correct. Do you know what date Lyle Menendez was arrested? He did go in, in March. He got arrested in March of mm -hmm. 1990. So you'd already contacted Mr. Now and gotten this letter back from him before Lyle Menendez was ever arrested. Isn't that correct? That does sound correct, yes. Yes, it does. Um, you indicated that your mother loaned Lyle Menendez $10,000 after he was in jail. Is that correct? Y yes. Do your mother and Lyle Menendez have a close relationship? Uh, Lyle, against mine and my family's, family's wishes, still continues to contact my mother. And is it against your mother's wishes? Um, I believe yes it is. So she hangs up when he calls. Objection. Calls for speculation. Here, Sustained. Why do you believe it's against your mother's wishes? You're on the same objection. Right. It was already asked and she answered it uh, regardless of why. Why don't you ask another question? The $10,000 that your mother loaned to Lyle mm -hmm. was when you two were still seeing each other. Is that correct? Um, yes, I believe it was when Lyle was in jail then. Okay. And he paid it back very shortly thereafter, didn't he? Uh, shortly, yes. And your mother had a very good relationship with him at that time, didn't she? Um, when I, she loaned him the $10,000? Well, I don't believe she would have loaned it to him otherwise. And you talked about the apartment you were living in versus the Beverly Hills house. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yes. What was the address of the apartment you were living in? Um, I don't remember. It was in Westwood. Or there was also another one after that, too, in Where, Brentwood. What apartment were you in before you moved into the Beverly Hills house? Um, in Westwood. What street? I don't remember. And you don't remember the address? Um, not off the top of my head, I do not. And you had a roommate named Deanna Berry? Co correct. And what kind of a building was it? It was um, uh, a two-story, and you just kind of walked up the stairs to the apartment. Okay. And the guest house that you were staying in, mm -hmm. um, I believe Mrs. Bazanich asked you about the iron gate in the front? Yes. Um, the closest way to get to the guest house was through the alley, is that correct? Um, there was an access there, yes. Okay. And was there an iron gate on that entry? There was a gate. It was not iron, but there was a gate and a lock. Okay. A wooden gate? Uh, yes, I believe so. Kind of gate that a pool man would come in and out of when he came to do servicing, that type of thing? I don't know. So it's just a wooden gate? Yes. When Mrs. Bazanich was talking about um, the research that you were doing, I believe in your testimony before, <coughs> you said that seeing the word acquittal was a red flag to you. Do you remember that? I don't remember that I, that I said the word acquittal. Maybe you did. Not guilty? Um, there was red flags just, I mean, they were child abuse cases. There was red flags. Where people were found not guilty. As I remember. Okay. Thank you. I have nothing for you. Anything else? No. All right. Thank you. You may step down. You're excused. We'll resume at 1.30, ladies and gentlemen. See you back here at 1.30. Detective Zola, up on the board, I have Exhibit 20, which is kind of crooked. But um, do you see in the, in the exhibit that there's a coffee table depicted, and I think it says coffee table on it? Yes. Okay. Now, in this particular diagram, is the coffee table in the same position in which it was when you first entered the crime scene, and Mr. and Mrs. Menendez were still there? Did you, I think I asked the question wrong. The coffee table in the diagram exhibit 20, is that position the same as when you first saw the coffee table when you first walked in the, in the room on August 20th or 21st? It appears not. All right. And how would you describe its position when you first saw it in relationship to this diagram? In relation to the diagram, the uh, coffee table was a little bit more parallel to the uh, couch. And by parallel to the couch, are you talking to the part of the couch where Mr. Menendez was seated? Correct. It, it wasn't completely parallel. It was just a little bit more than is uh, depicted in, in the diagram. 
Now, I'm going to show you another diagram of exhibit uh, six. <coughs> You've been present during almost the whole trial, correct? That's correct. And in exhibit six, I believe there was some testimony by one of the two defendants that there's a staircase in this exhibit which doesn't actually exist in the house. Is that correct? That's correct. Was this particular diagram taken from blueprints from the house? Yes, it was. Now, we've been talking about the coffee table. I have uh, two exhibits here, which are exhibit 251 and 250, which appear to show, among other things, the coffee table. Is that correct? That's correct. And um, on the coffee table, when you went into the room <coughs> and depicted in the photographs, was there a television guide which was opened? Yes. Okay. Have you had a uh, chance to look at a copy of the TV guide from um, the week starting August the 20th? of 1989, the, uh, an original copy of the TV Guide. For August 20th? Yes, starting Sunday, August 20th, 1989. Yes. You know, I would object to, I think it counts as misleading the witness by calling it a TV Guide. It's not TV Guide. All right. What are you sorry. referring to? I'm, That's talking, I'm sorry, it's the Los Angeles Times TV uh, reference, right? Oh, that we should understand as a date. Yes. Okay. May I put this? Yes. In the um, photographs which you have in front of you, 250 and 251, can you see an, a kind of advertisement on the right, lower right-hand corner of a certain page of the TV guide, the TV, uh, Los Angeles Time TV guide? Yes. Okay, and here I have a television guide, television times um, from August the 20th, 1989 through August 26, 1989, and on page 11 there appears to be an ad for a show called Diamonds. Now, do you see this ad in the TV guide I have here today in either photograph 250 or 251? Yes, it appears to be the same. All right, and on the same page in the TV guide I'm holding here are program listings starting at 6.30 p.m., is that correct? Correct. Okay, and, Your Honor, for the record, I have copies of both the front of the TV Times and the uh, page in reference. And in Exhibit 251, can you notice that the TV time is <coughs> curled back so that the only portion that is on the table is the portion for the times at 6.30 that night? Yes, that's correct. <coughs> Detective Zoller, um, you attended the autopsy of Mrs. Menendez, is that correct? That's correct. And um, during the autopsy, did you become aware of the fact that one of Mrs. Menendez's... I'm going to object to this, Ron. I'd ask Okay. Detective Zoller, after the testimony of Lyle Menendez, did you um, drive the route that it was explained by him in his testimony as that which occurred after the homicides? Yes. And on how many separate occasions did you drive that route? Two times. And what was your total driving time the second time you drove it, for instance? 51 minutes. When you drove that particular route, did you go to Century City Shopping Mall? Yes, I did. Did you notice whether there were parking meters outside of the Century City Shopping Mall? There were not. Okay. How long have you worked in Beverly Hills? Since 1976. Is Century City right on the outskirts of Beverly Hills? It is. Had you ever been to Century City Shopping Mall prior to going there to trace the uh, route? Yes. Okay. Had you ever seen or known that there were parking meters outside of Century City? I have never known Century City to have any parking meters. Now, at one point in your driving this particular route, did you go, in fact, to the top of Coldwater Canyon where it intersects Mulholland Drive? Yes. And did you turn left on Mulholland Drive in order to find a place where the guns might have been tossed? Yes, I did. And in order to do that, did you have to find a place that looked like a place where guns could actually be secreted? Yes, I went to the first uh, area where you could actually pull off of the roadway. Okay. Before you got the, to the area where you can actually pull off the roadway, did you notice a number of houses on the right side? Yes, I did. And as you were traveling west on Mulholland, were you looking for places on the north side of Mulholm, that would be overlooking the San Fernando Valley? Yes, I was. Okay. When you finally came to the place where you could pull out, um, could you describe the kind of vegetation there was in that area? It was 
very thick brush and uh, an occasional tree. Now, prior to going on this particular drive, um, you had been up in that area in 1990, is that correct? Yes. When you went on the drive in 1993, did the brush appear to be any, any different from the density or the growth that you saw in 1990? No. And how would you describe the lighting conditions at this place, which was the first place you could pull out on Mulholland, west of Coldwater? There was no lighting at all. The only lights uh, was whatever natural lighting there was. That would be like moonlight or starlight? Correct. Okay. Um, during the period of time that you were um, doing this particular route, did you make a videotape the second time? Yes. Uh, how would you characterize the videotape? Was it interesting or dull? Excuse me, Aaron, what's the dull? Sustained. Okay. Well, you, you made a videotape, correct? That's correct. And did you give a copy of it to the defense? Yes. And you were, were you here for the testimony of Ms. Erdely that she received that copy? Yes. Okay. Now, um, on May the 24th of 1993, uh, did Mr. Ed Fenno come to the Beverly Hills Police Department to be interviewed by myself, Mr. Kuriyama, and you? Yes. Um, could I ask the counsel to refrain from that so I could get my Ed Fenno file for a moment? Okay, well, I can ask a different topic. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have other questions? I have one more area and then... Okay, well, go ahead and look at what All right. else you have. Um, Your Honor, I have a photo uh, two photographs, actually, a large one and a smaller one. Um, I've shown them to counsel. May they be marked as people, excuse me, the next two exhibits? 387 and 388. Okay, the um, larger photo is 387, the smaller one is 388. Counsel? I've seen these. May I go to these? Yes. I'll show you a photograph first, which is 387. Is this particular photograph taken at the night that you and the police department went to 722 North Elm? Yes. And does that particular photograph depict on the left-hand side the tennis court, on the right-hand side the swimming pool, and behind the guest house? That's correct. And when you got to the crime scene and noticed what the, the environment outside of the particular room where the decedents were, did you notice that the door to the guest house was open like that? Yes. And here uh, is a photograph which appears to be of the same scene but in daylight. Is that yes, correct? Yes, that's correct. That's Exhibit 388? That's correct. And did you cause that photograph to be taken once daylight broke on the 21st of August? Yes. And does that essentially depict the same scene that's in Exhibit uh, 387? Essentially, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And is there cross examination on these subjects? Yes, sir. Okay. Detective Zoller, the diagram with the coffee table, um, you didn't draw that yourself, I take it? That's correct. And was that drawn by someone with the Beverly Hills Police Department? Yes, it was. And was that diagram drawn after? <coughs> some changes had been made in the room? Let me re rephrase that, if I may. When you first arrived, the coffee table was not in the position depicted in that drawing. Is that correct? My impression by looking at the drawing, that's correct. And so, at some point in time while you were there, was the coffee table moved? Yes. And Mr. and Mrs. Menendez his bodies were removed also. Is that correct? That's correct. And there were a number of people in that room. Is that correct? Yeah. Was it the evening that you were there when Mr. and Mrs. Menendez were first shot? That morning, the morning of the 21st. At what point do you say different people were there? Between the time that you arrived and when this drawing was made. There were various people in, in the crime scene, yes. Would it be fair to say that the drawing, that that, that chart depicts, is what the room looked like after 
things had been moved. That's the impression I have by looking at the coffee table depicted in the diagram, yes. So it's not representative of the scene you first encountered, is that correct? Without personally measuring it, I can't, I can't say whether it is or is not. It's just my impression by looking at it, the coffee table looks a little bit, moved a little bit more than, than what it was initially. Mrs. Bazanich asked you about another diagram which has the floor plan of the house, is that correct? That's correct. And that floor plan was taken off of some blueprints? Yes. Are you aware of any other errors in that floor plan beside the fact that it shows a stairway that doesn't exist? The only other one is uh, the doorway that was put in from the kitchen to the dining room. And have you personally <coughs> checked the house to see if the remainder of the diagram is accurate? Not after the diagram was made, no. And when you first went to this location up on Mulholland searching for the guns, you said that was 1990? That's that correct. correct. When in 1990? Approximately uh, March of 1990. And so you didn't have the opportunity to go up there and look around in August of 89? Is I had correct? no reason to go up there in August of 89, that's correct. Right. And you did not go up there at any time before March of 1990, is that correct? That's correct. And the photographs that you've identified of the guest house, do you know when those photographs were taken, more specifically other than nighttime and daytime? The, uh, the photo where it looks like it's dark was taken the night of the 20th, early, early morning of the 21st. Do you know what time? I do not know. Do you know if anybody had been in the guest house to search for people or for evidence prior to the taking of that photograph? I do know that the police personnel had gone in there and informed me that nothing was disturbed by them. But there had been people in there prior That's to the taking of the photograph? That's correct. Do you know how many people? I have no idea. Do you know who? Um, I can only speculate. No, I don't. Thank you. I have nothing for you. Any examination on behalf of the uh, defendant, Eric Mendes? Um, at least if I understand it, you, you agree, Detective Zoller, there's no staircase uh, in the location that that diagram shows? That's correct. And uh, you remember when Eric Menendez testified he corrected that diagram? Yes. Were his corrections right? Yes. Um, you were aware that that house was uh, basically gutted and rebuilt at some point, were you not? I know it was uh, remodeled or rebuilt. I'm not sure whether it was gutted or not. Do you remember what the date of the blueprints were? I do not. Could they have been the blueprints before the house was re for the original building of the house rather than for the redo? It was for the redo of the house. Okay. Um, just talk to you for a minute about the coffee table and the open TV guide. When you got there, was the TV on? Yes, it was. What was on it? Uh, as far as the show? Yeah. I don't know. What station? I don't know other than I have an impression it was Channel 5. I don't know how I have that impression, though. A commercial channel? Yes. I want to talk to you a little bit about this route. You said you drove after Lyle testified. I take it you didn't drive after Eric did? That's correct. Okay. And. Um, When you get to Mulholland, I mean, uh, at the top of Coldwater Canyon, if you first make a left, at first there's um, houses or shrubbery on the right, correct? That's correct. At different times, um, well, strike that. And, and then sometimes on the left there are houses, and sometimes on the left there's mountain. That's correct. Okay. Now, you said you went to the first turnoff. Are you talking about an area where you could actually pull your car completely off the road and there's like a big dirt, gravel, um, crescent shape space off to the right? No. Okay. Uh, are you familiar with an area up there where there is now a new housing development on the left-hand side of the road? Very she-she gated thing. Yes. Okay. Um, how far from that area did you do your examination? Th that's on the non-valley side. That's on the town side, the housing development, correct? That's correct. It's on the left. The valley side is on the right, right? Traveling west, that's correct. Okay. How far from that housing development did you do your visual or 
examination or your search in 1990? I believe we did it in that general area. Okay. The search actually encompassed from approximately a half mile east of Coldwater on Mulholland and then from that point west uh, at times all the way to and past the San Diego Freeway. Now if you look down that hill, the one that overlooks the valley, uh, at the bottom of the hill there are streets, are there not, and houses? Yes. So uh, eventually I suppose if you, if you throw something down that hill and water comes, it could wash it all the way down to somebody's backyard down below. Based on the way the topography is situated, uh, it's just a sheer hill down to houses below, correct? In some places. In some places, yes. All right. Are you familiar with an area near the housing development where there is a, uh, a water drainage system, a rather elaborate culvert catch basin? Which side of the road? The valley side. I don't recall, no. And I take it then that you don't recall that there are actually three or four such areas on the right side of the road where there's water courses going down the valley side within, say, about a quarter of a mile of that newly built housing development. Quarter of a mile. Question. I don't. How elaborate are you indicating these are? Well, there's like these concrete little bridge-like things, and then there's um, I know one of them has a concrete, looks like a concrete piping system down the hill. Do you remember that one? That's like right across the street from the new housing tract. I remember some areas like that, exactly the position of them in reference to the housing tract, I don't recall. Okay, no. well there's that one and then a little farther west on the road you recall there's another area like that with a concrete little bridge-like structure over a drainage type system going down the hill. I don't recall exactly the position of these. Okay. Do you recall, uh, with respect to any of those kinds of, uh, of areas, that there's a, a, like a ravine a free of vegetation that flows along the water course? Well, with respect to the one, for example, that's right near the housing track, uh, you say you look down the hill. Did you see that there's a dirt area where there's no vegetation right around the water pipe? I don't recall, no. Did you ever go down that hill near that uh, housing development? I, along with approximately 10 to 15 other police officers, combed that area. I don't recall that particular area myself, no. Okay, so you don't know that you ever went down there? When you say you, you're referring to him. You personally. Person. No, correct. that's correct. All right. And you didn't do any of this combing until March or April of 1990? That's correct. And you recollect that there were rains the winter um, of 1989-1990? I don't recall offhand, but I would assume that there was some rain. Probably not a whole lot, but some? Correct. And did you ever do any investigating with the water district to see uh, what the amount of water that that drainage pipe would be sending down that hill? No. Now, uh, returning to this route that you drove, you, uh, in one of the stops you made, well, first of all, you left from the rear of North Elm Drive, is that correct? I actually left from the front of North Elm Drive, but the indication is, is when I was at the rear is when I started the clock although okay. the clock on the movie starts a minute prior. Okay. Now, you made a right, um, well, I don't understand. Did you go down the alley? Is that what you did? Yes. Okay. Did Lyle testify he went down the alley? I don't believe so. He was unclear of what he did after he turned right. Okay. Um, so you chose to go down the alley to the next uh, east-west cross street, which was Elevado. That's correct. And then you made another right, did you not, to get back to Elm and go south on Elm? That's correct. Now, Lyle didn't testify to that, did he? That he went on Elevato and then a left on to Elm? Oh, that's correct. He was uncertain what he had done after he turned right. Okay. And then you went to, to Century City by using um, 
North Santa Monica Boulevard. Is that big or little? Is that big Santa Monica? That's big Santa Monica. Okay. Um, and you got to the Century City parking, the Century City shopping center where the movies are, correct? Yes. Did you go up and buy a ticket? No. Did you in go into the subterranean parking structure? Yes. Now, Lyle hadn't testified that he did that, had he? No, he had not. He testified he went to a, a uh, metered parking space. Thank you. All right. Okay. And then after you left Century City, you uh, went um, <coughs> back to North Santa Monica Boulevard and basically took... Um, went back eastbound to Rexford Drive and then went up to Coldwater and Mulholland, correct? That's correct. All right. Now, after that, you went back down to Santa Monica Boulevard, correct? That's correct. And you chose to take Santa Monica Boulevard all the way out to Santa Monica. That's correct. Okay. Did Lyle Menendez testify they took Santa Monica Boulevard? No. He said he didn't know what street. That's correct. And uh, in your estimation, is Santa Monica Boulevard the fastest street between Beverly Hills and Santa Monica, or one of the slower ones? I picked that because it was a major thoroughfare. Olympic is a major thoroughfare, too, is it not? Yes, it is. And there are fewer lights on Olympic than on Santa Monica Boulevard, are there not? <coughs> That's why Olympic is a major commuter street. Isn't Olympic Boulevard also a much broader street than Santa Monica Boulevard? In West L.A. it is, yes. Okay, now you stopped at some gas station on the corner of Selby Avenue. Um, can't quite read that. Is that Selby and Santa Monica Boulevard? Yes. Did Lyle Menendez testify he stopped at that particular gas station? No. Did you take any photographs of that gas station? Still photographs? Yeah. No. Now, at some point in your travels, let me miss... Mrs. Pizanich wanted to ask you about the video, but at some point did somebody drop the camera? Not to my knowledge, no. Who was the camera person? My wife. Does she do that for a living? No. And did you maintain a uh, mileage log, log for each piece of the journey? Not each piece, no. And did you maintain a log of the, uh, uh, your speed? No. I have nothing further at this juncture, Your Honor. Shall I do the question? How long would it be? A couple questions. Okay. Um, You've been a Beverly Hills Police Department uh, officer for a number of years, correct? Correct. And you've driven through Beverly Hills on more than one occasion? Correct. Did you att attempt in this drive to take the most direct route you could? Yes. All right. And did you view the tape, uh, the videotape that Ms. Early, the defense investigator, prepared in this case? Yes, I did. And the total driving time in that tape versus the tape that you made, was there a difference of one minute? Yes, there was. Okay. And, um, Never mind, I have nothing to do. All right. In a moment, we'll uh, excuse everybody until tomorrow at uh, 9 o'clock. Um, I want to speak briefly with the uh, gold jury about a couple of matters, so I'll keep you here for just a couple of minutes and do that. And the blue jury, um, if um, those of you who are ready to leave without going into the jury room, you can leave. If those uh, some of you want to go into the jury room, I'd ask that you stay there for a couple of minutes until I finish talking to these jurors, and then we can let everybody go at the same time. But uh, when you do leave, uh, all of you, please uh, come back tomorrow at 9 o'clock, please. And uh, we'll uh, also please don't uh, discuss this case with anyone. Don't form any final opinions about it. And uh, don't permit yourselves to be exposed to anything about this case outside of the courtroom. And as far as the blue jurors, you can either leave now and uh, go home, or if you have to go into the jury room, just stay in there for a couple of minutes until I finish with the gold jury. And in regards to the uh, gold jury, there uh, are a couple of things I want to tell you about uh, some of the testimony that you heard yesterday. And um, 
that um, relates uh, solely to the evidence that was introduced before you. Um, first of all, uh, in reference to uh, the testimony of uh, Mrs. Eisenberg, Miss Eisenberg, who testified uh, yesterday uh, briefly uh, before you, um, uh, there was an answer that she gave uh, in which she referred to a phone call uh, or a phone conversation she had uh, with the defendant Lyle Menendez about a will. Uh, that answer, the entire reference to a will is, uh, and the, that reference to that phone conversation is uh, stricken, and you're admonished to disregard the entirety of the answer in reference uh, to the will, or a will. And also, in regards to um, the testimony of Brian Anderson, he testified um, um, in regards to a conversation that uh, he testified that uh, he had with uh, Jose Menendez, in which uh, Mr. Menendez told him that uh, he was going to have a conversation with the defendant Lyle Menendez. In regards to uh, that conversation uh, with uh, between Mr. Anderson and Mr. Menendez, uh, the that evidence is received only for the purpose of showing the intent of Mr. Menendez to have a conversation with Lyle Menendez and for no other purpose. And you are to receive it for that purpose only. In regards to the um, notes I've received from various jurors yesterday regarding requests, um, I've shown those to the lawyers. I'll discuss those uh, uh, with the lawyers further. Um, um, at this point, uh, I would uh, indicate that the, the uh, odds are that uh, those requests that you're making uh, won't uh, be honored, that we won't be able to accommodate those uh, requests that you've indicated in your uh, notes, but I'll talk further with the lawyers about that. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, what is your occupation? I work for Bella Patrol as a Staff Sergeant Watch Commander. And how long have you been employed by Bel Air Patrol? A total of seven years. What is the nature of that business? We are a total security company. We mostly respond to alarms, and we also do guarded communities and guarded contracts. And what is a guarded contract? Um, the company is called for um, <coughs> parties and anything that has to do where they want armed officers on property to protect property. In August of 1989, uh, what was your rank and, and what was your duties? I was a sergeant in 89, and I was a field training officer in charge of the program. In late August and early September of 1989, were you assigned to guard uh, the residents of the location at 722 North Elm in the city of Beverly Hills? Yes. The, Men the Menendez home? Correct. Do you see anyone in the courtroom today that you saw at that home? Yes, I do. Who do you see? Eric. Uh, do you recall by looking at uh, the log of the officers at that residence uh, when you worked? Your Honor, I'm going to object to this. I don't think we have that. I mean, is it marked as evidence or identified? Yeah, yeah. Anybody wants to mark this. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, she has. Do you now know when you worked at that residence? I was on property five times. And do you recall the shifts that Correct. you worked? Um, I believe it was offhand, possibly two graves, one or two days, and two mid shifts. And would you describe for the juries what uh, the, the graveyard shifts are and what the days and mids are? Day watch can be from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. P.m. or mid shift would be from 4 p.m. to midnight, and graveyards would be from midnight to 8 a.m. Do you recall which dates you worked uh, the 
midnight to 8 a.m. shifts? Um, by memory, no. Have you taken a look at the log to refresh your recollection? I have them listed. Okay. You, you have listed the days that you worked? Right, just what from the schedules I've seen. Okay. Would you pull out the list? Take the witnesses to look at the list refresh. Yes, would, would, it refre would it refresh your present uh, memory or recollection to take a look at the list? Yes, since it was four years ago, it's... Okay, why don't you do that? Could I to the list? Yes, before you uh, answer the question, This has nothing to do with it. Don't talk. <coughs> which days did you work at 722 North Elm and which hours? On 828, I worked from 4 to 12. Um, on 9 1. Okay, that, that's 4 p.m. 4 p.m. To midnight. to midnight. On 9 1, I worked the graveyard shift. That was from midnight to 8 a.m. But the way we work it on schedule, midnight would be 9 2. 9 September 2nd. Okay, so you worked midnight, that is. 9 1, and then you got off that next day at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. on 9 2. Correct. On September 7th, I worked from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The 7th or 2nd? 7th. On September 11th, I worked from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. <coughs> and from September 13th, I worked from 8 a.m to 4 p.m. On those, on any of those days, did you see Eric Menendez in the presence of uh, another male Caucasian? Yes. And on any of those days, did you see the two of them in any um, bed clothing or, or pajama type clothing. There was a morning where <clears throat> we had to advise any of the family members that were on property before if a phone rang and they weren't able to get it, anything, we were to advise them. <clears throat> um, at one point he was in his room, I went up the stairs, knocked on the door, and I don't remember exactly what I had to tell him, but he and another individual did walk out and it appeared to be in like a robe kind of. When you say individual, was it a male individual? Yes. Did they both come out of uh, Eric Menendez's bedroom? Eric came out first to see what I needed. And did uh, then another uh, As male? soon as I walked down, there was another individual. And did they both seem to have bed clothing on? It was like reading, Your Honor. I you understand what you mean by bed sheets? Yes. Uh, why don't you clarify what you mean? It was like well, a rope type. Okay, did Eric Menendez have a robe on? Yes. Did this other man have a, a robe on? A type, yes. Uh, could you just generally describe the other man? Um, a male white, 5'11", to 6 foot, 190 pounds, dark hair. Did it appear that the uh, young man had spent the night at the house? We're going to on calls for speculation. Sister. I came out at midnight. There's, uh, okay. No answer. Okay. Do you recall which shift you were on when you made this observation? It was the end of my midnight shift. So okay. it would have been September 2nd before 8 o'clock. So, so you, were, you came on duty on September 1st at midnight. You got off at 8 a.m. on September 2nd. It would have been <clears throat> midnight September 2nd to 8 a.m. September 2nd. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Would you take a look at, at your records again? I want to say the first. I'm sorry. September 1st, 
at, let's say, 11.59 is when I was on property. Okay. I got off September 2nd at 8 a.m. Okay. So was it that night or it was the morning. early morning Correct. that you made this observation? Correct. During that whole shift that you were on, uh, had you seen this other man in, in the robe uh, that was with Eric Menendez? No. Okay. Do you, crawl, do you recall approximately what time it was that you went up to the bedroom of Eric Menendez to notify him of, of what you had, have indicated to the jury? No. It would have to be before 8 o'clock. Did, did uh, they appear to be, did you, did you arouse them from a sleep? No, I'm going to object to this as long as it's speculation. <coughs> I'm sorry. Calling for speculation. She says she knocked on the door and Eric answered. How did she know if she aroused them from sleep? All right. Objection sustained. No okay. Did they have sleep in their eyes or anything like yeah, that? <laughs> okay. Did they have their hair messed up? Like when you sleep on a bed, your head might, hair might be flat or whatever. All right. Why don't you ask it without characterizing? Uh, okay. Okay. Did you do you recall making any particular observations about uh, either Eric Menendez or his male friend? Can object to the form of question. Mr. Freeman doesn't know if it was a friend or a relative or not. All right. It's also vague as to observations. Can you raise the question? Approximately how old was this other young man? Um, I wasn't really focusing on him. Um, my main concern was Eric. We were contracted to protect him and the home. So I wasn't really focusing on him. Okay, you had indicated that you're about 5'11 to 6 feet tall? Right. Overall. Is that correct? Yes. And approximately how much uh, do you weigh? Asking, yes. It has been, but I'll, I'll let the witness answer. 180, 190. And, and what color hair was it? It was dark, okay. just a dark color. Well, was it an old man? A no. young man? It, it, I can't say anywhere between the ages of late teens and mid-twenties. I mean, I wasn't really focused on him. I have nothing further this time, Cross-examination. <laughs> Um, I take it you're recently married, and that's yes. why your name has changed. So I got now. I've got to learn your new name. Just a minute, Miss mm -hmm. Loden, Mrs. Loden. Thank you. Uh, did you keep a log of people that you observed in this house during the um, five occasions that you were on property, as you call it? When we were briefed on how to work this project, we were advised not to. So is that no? That's correct. Uh, did you write down anywhere the description of this person that you claim you saw at the house on the morning of September 2nd? No. Um, and you say that you got to the house uh, for the midnight shift, and ordinarily would you get there a few minutes before your shift changes? Correct, for change of watch briefing. Exactly. And in the change of watch briefing, isn't it your, wasn't it your standard practice, particularly as a training sergeant, to ask the person you're relieving if there's anyone in the house. None of that information was given to me, no. I didn't ask you if it was given to you. I asked you, wasn't that I did not argument practice? Is, yes, watch your rephrase. Of wasn't that your standard <coughs> practice? I did not ask. No, my question is, was that your standard practice? Why don't you back up and what was it that you asked? Was it your standard practice when you got on duty to have a briefing from the guard you're relieving and ask them, for example, what's happening, who's in the house? Not who's in the house, because obviously if Eric or any other family member had any problems with who was in the house, they wouldn't have let him in the house in the first place. Uh, I don't think you're understanding me. You get to this house. Now, Eric wasn't living there every day that you were there. That's that correct? correct. So when you get to this house and you're relieving another guard, wouldn't you want to know if the people that you're supposed to protect are there? Objection Overall. Eric, Eric, for example. Yes, they did advise me Eric was in the house. Well, my question was, isn't it, wasn't it your standard practice to ask? Not standard practice. We treat every contract differently. We're talking about this particular... With uh, respect to this particular job, was it your standard practice to ask when you got there, who's in the house? If the family was home, they would advise that 
the family was home. If not, then they would advise that no one was in the home. Now, you're now testifying that when you got to that location on September 1st, you asked the guard you were relieving and was told Eric was in the house. They Correct? advise us who was in the home. Yes, what were you told? That one of the family members was home. Yes, and what about anybody else? I was not advised. When is the first time that you spoke to the police about these supposed observations of yours on September 1st, September 2nd? Sustained to the form of the question. When was the first time that you talked to anybody affiliated with the prosecution about these observations of yours of September 1st and 2nd? I was given a briefing from an investigative individual about uh, I guess approximately six months ago. A briefing? And then some investigator came to our office and questioned all the officers that were on property. Was it your understanding that was someone from the prosecution or was that someone from the defense? I do not remember. <coughs> okay. On um, September 7th, 1993, were you interviewed? I don't remember that day. Uh, do you know who the gentleman is who's sitting at the end of the table? I do. Well, who is he? Detective Zoller. And did, did he ever interview you? Yes. And what month did he interview you in? Possibly October. I don't remember. What day is it today? 19th of November. And October was a month ago? Correct. And you can't remember between now and a month ago That's when you were morning. interviewed by Detective Zoller. Is that true? I went on vacation <coughs> on October 9th uh -huh. and on. From what I've done from then and come back from vacation, I don't remember exactly when I was spoken to. Do you remember the month when you were spoken to by Detective Zola? Possibly early October. So possibly means you don't remember your guessing, is that Exactly. Right? I don't remember the exact date. But you do remember that on exactly September 2nd, in the early morning hours, you saw this other man at Eric's house. Is that right? I'm saying I was on shift at that time. No, I, my, my question is, are you saying Objection. you do well, remember? The question. All right, yes, you did. Uh, did you finish your answer? No, sir. Okay, why don't you finish your answer? I do remember being on shift at that time by looking at the schedules. I do remember a morning of answer, answering or going up to Eric's room, knocking on the door, but I cannot say exactly what day it was, but I do remember the morning that I did go to that door. Okay, so you remember there was a morning when you went to the door, correct? Correct. But you can't really remember if it was the morning after a graveyard shift or if it was one of the other two mornings, three mornings, when you got there at 8 a.m. Isn't that true? All I know is that I was on shift at that time, and it was a morning. Well, if you could answer my question, are you saying you can't say it was the night you were at graveyard, only that it was a day when you were there in the morning? Correct. So you don't know if it was September 2nd? Well, then... Can you answer my question? Do you know if, in fact, it was September 2nd? That's the question. No. And, in fact, when you spoke to Detective Zoller, which was, by the way, on September 7th, 1993, you told him you didn't remember what day it was that you saw a male friend at the house. Isn't that right? I don't remember my schedule. Do you remember what you told Detective Zoller on September 7th, 1993? I don't remember his questions. I answered whatever was asked of me. Did you, do you remember telling him that you did not remember the day upon which you saw a friend of Eric's at the house? Objection, I misstates the report. Overall. Do you understand the question? Repeat it, please. All right, why don't you rephrase the question? Do you remember telling Detective Zoller on September 7th that you did not remember the day that you saw the male friend of Eric's? At That's the correct, until I saw my schedules. So you're saying you didn't see your schedule before you spoke to the detective on September 2nd? On uh, September 7th? I haven't seen the schedule since four years ago. But he has the schedule, didn't he have Not the schedule? Not at the time. Overall, the answer will stand. So you're saying when you were interviewed by Detective Zoller in September, you didn't see the schedule? No. And that's why you didn't know what day it was? Correct. But you still don't know what day it is, right? I cannot tell you, but I know it's a morning before I got off work. Now let's talk about the investigator who came to your office. That was a woman, was it not? Correct. Her name was Cynthia Erdely, correct? 
I don't remember. She worked for the defense, isn't that right? I don't know. And she interviewed you in March 1993, isn't that right? I don't know. So you don't know when you were interviewed by the defense investigator this year, correct? Correct. Do you remember telling Ms. Erdely, the defense investigator in March, that you remembered a friend of Eric's being there on the morning of September 7th, 1989. I cannot tell her exactly what date she, if she ate. My question she, is, did I you do not remember. Do you remember telling her that the friend of Eric's that you saw was wearing jeans and a t-shirt? <coughs> I don't remember. Do you recall telling Miss Erdely that when, and by the way, when she was at Bel Air Patrol interviewing you, she had the logs, didn't she? I don't remember if she had the logs. Do you remember telling Miss Erdely that when you worked the graveyard shift on Friday, starting on September 1st, there was no one in the house? I don't remember that. Do you remember telling her that at the beginning of your shift you were advised by the preceding guard that there was no family member in the house? I don't remember that. Nothing further. Any redirect? Yes. Ma'am, do you remember talking to Detective Zoller? <coughs> and you believe it was uh, October, and, and uh, counsel's indicated it was September 7th. Well, this counsel, year. will you stipulate it was September 7th, All right, let's not ask for stipulations uh, in that fashion. Ma'am, do you remember telling Detective Zoller that the time that you saw this man with Eric, that it was probably the night that she spent there on the graveyard shift as you saw him early the following morning. Objection. Do you remember telling Detective Zoller that? I remember that I did not see this individual come onto the property, but I do remember seeing him in the morning. And you indicated to Detective Zoller that you thought it was probably the night you worked on the graveyard shift. Correct. And it was early the next morning that you saw. Correct. Made the observations. Thank you. Any recross? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. You may step down.